Chris Davis, right center. That baby is gone. There it goes. Run number 300. Hinder dives a sensational play. It is game night from the big city. We welcome you from New York. Times Square all lit up for postseason fever. You go from there on the four train to the Bronx and Yankee Stadium. Back in the wild card game are the New York Yankees. And it is time for the 2018 American League wild card game presented by Handcook Tires. This crowd is electric early. It's the Oakland A's and the New York Yankees matching up one game to see who advances to take on the Boston Red Sox. Hi everybody Brian Anderson along with the Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley. The great Ron Darling is here. We'll check in with Lauren Shahadi in just a moment as well. This is the game if you're in a fan base and you're with these teams you don't necessarily want to be in but the 100 win Yankees the 97 win Oakland Athletics are here for the right to go play the Red Sox who had the best record this year. Well I'll tell you what if I was a player on one of those teams with 100 wins or 97 wins I wouldn't be exactly thrilled to play a wild card game I'm telling you but guess what I'm not and I love the wild card game I think the fans love the wild card game I really do and this is going to be exciting to talk about two clubs that hit the ball out of the ballpark the Yankees do it better than anybody and, and the Oakland A's are a second to them but you know this is going to be a game where somebody's got to get somebody out and we're going to see a lot of relief pitching a lot of relief pitching and you never know how it's going to go but I am excited about this game well Ronnie you get into this kind of game right it's a game seven vibe so it's an elimination game which means it's all hands on deck you change up your roster a little bit and the headliner is always Who's your starting pitcher? How about the Oakland A's going with the bullpen today? Well, when you look at, and Dennis talked about their ability to hit the home run, but really their strength, foundation, is their bullpen. So they're going to have a bullpen game today. They're not going to have an opener. They have no starter to back up Leon Hendricks. But this will be his ninth time that he's done it since September. His bullpen mates will have to cover four innings, and if you work black backwards, Blake Trinan is their closer. He could get two. Jay Reese Familia, he could get two innings. And Fernando Rodney could get the other. Well, equally as important is the Yankees' headline starter. And it was not Jay Happ. They went with Luis Severino instead. Your thoughts about that? I was asked by Aaron Boone on Sunday who I thought he would pitch. I said Jay Happ. I was wrong. Luis Severino, 14 and 2 in the first half. Aaron Boone said talent plays in the postseason. He has the highest upside of any of their starters. And if he pitches any way close to how he pitched in the first half, that'll be a great decision by Boone. Well, of course, the Yankees are right back in this wild card game. Luis Severino was on the mound here. He pitched well after that. We're going to hear more from Lauren on that in just a moment, but we're ready to go. It's time to play baseball tonight. The American League wild card game from Yankee Stadium. Stay right there.
Sports on TBS is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Chevy. Chevy has earned JD Power Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs. And by Taco Bell's $5 Triple Double Crunch Wrap Box. Oh, it's just a picture-perfect night for the grand old game here tonight. We're at Yankee Stadium ready for the A's and the New York Yankees. And before we get to the lineups in the first pitch, let's check in with the fourth member of our team, Lauren Shahadi. And it is on this mound once again for Luis Severino. Lauren, he's back in the wild card game. Yeah, B.A., Luis Severino knows exactly what went wrong a year ago in this wild card game. Plain and simply said, I let the moment get too big. I was too amped. He later recovered in the postseason, but said the fact that they're giving me the ball means they trust me. It gives me all the confidence in the world. I just saw Aaron Boo, and I go, you nervous? He said, you know what? It starts and ends with Luis Severino. When he's right, when he's on, he's as uncomfortable and at bat as there is in the big leagues. John Carlos Sam said the same thing when he's right and when he's on. He said, the defense is bored. It's a beautiful thing, but they're bored. So I asked them both, when will you know if Luis Severino is on? They said the exact same thing, gentlemen. They said, 10 pitches in, you'll know, VA. <laughs> it's going to be great to watch. They have a lot of faith in their young hurler who is 24 years of age, was 23 when he was on this mound last year, as Lauren said. He pitched well after that, had some good moments in the postseason. Let's check the batting order presented by Hand Cook Tire for the swing and A's, the slugging A's. Nick Martini will lead it off. He's a rookie. Matt Chapman, a second year player in second. Then Jed Lowry, 99 RBIs this year. Chris Davis, top home run man in the AL. He's followed by Matt Olson, Stephen Piscotti. And the bottom three for Bob Melvin is Ramon Laureano, Marcus Simeon, and Jonathan Lucroy. A formidable lineup for the Oakland Athletics, and they, like the Yankees, hit a ton of home runs. Talk to us about Luis Severino here, Eck, trying to perform in this spotlight once again a year to the date later right, than I, I, last year. It's amazing a year to the date, but he knows what the sensation feels like. It didn't go down very well last year, but you know, this season's been a tale of two seasons, two halves, really. The second half, he just got knocked around. He was he was unhittable in the first half, but recently he's been throwing the ball pretty well. And what you're going to see is high 90s fastball, nasty slider, and occasional changeup. He's got a decent changeup. I don't know if you'll see as many of them tonight because he's going to go as hard as he can, as long as he can. That's right, Eric. Eight days rest. Two bullpens he threw in between his last start to get here. Command could be an issue with that many days off. Pleasure to be with you guys. We start this game. We're thinking about our colleague Ernie Johnson. Healing well in Atlanta. His crowd on its feet. Nick Martini stands in. Luis Severino fires the first pitch. It's a strike. And away we go. Winner of this one earns the right to go to Boston after this game tonight. They'll start a series against the Red Sox on Friday. And it's quickly 0-2. And two big fastballs right out of the bullpen for Luis Severino. This is what it's going to be like all night. Pitch to pitch, especially with two strikes. Yes. Jim Wolf is a pitcher's umpire. He's very aggressive in calling strikes. Martini, I think, thought that ball was up in the strike zone. It was not. And if he's calling those pitches, that it might be a nice night for Severino. Oh, well, you got to have that. <laughs> he's a strike. <laughs> Jim Wolf, the older brother of former big league pitcher Randy Wolf, gets the ball behind the plate. There's another 98 mile an hour fastball. And that spotted the corner on Martini. Three pitches, backwards K. And that's the kind of start you're looking for. And Chapman on a ground ball to third. Miguel Andujar, bad throw, but the tag is on. Excellent play over at first base by Luke Voigt. Yankees are a little shaky defensively, especially at third base with Andujar. And they got some big bodies on this field, and Luke Voigt able to save an air from Andujar right away. Listen, Andujar's bat plays. He has been working extremely hard all summer to learn how to play the position. He's not quite there yet, and saved by Voigt with the ball off the bat. Didn't even have time to 
talk about Matt Chapman who was in and out of there quickly two quick outs and here is Jed Lowry you know this game is meant to be played relaxed with a slow heartbeat I don't know how you guys did it all those years in the postseason well I'd rather be playing right now my heartbeat's <laughs> just kicking right now Lowry this could be a key factor in this game Lowry has great numbers against Luis Severino in his career six hits in 11 at bat Severino is pitching for the third time against the A's he just saw them a month ago and didn't get out of the third inning as Lowry fouls that one away and Lowry has good swings at the fastball what a year he's had this year career year 99 RBI been around a long time. Ronnie doesn't feel like as you look at both of these lineups yeah. there are a lot of pinch hit options meaning those who are in there now pretty good chance we're going to see them later in the game and the A's are a team that pinch hits more than most American League teams but Bob Melvin loves his lineup as it is right now going into the postseason his fifth postseason team Bob Melvin the fixed 56 year old skipper now in his eighth year with the Athletics. Here's a 2 2 yes. and a strikeout to end the inning. Wow. What Neil a start. Yankees batting order presented by Hancock Tire. Aaron Boone managing in his first postseason game turns this one in. Andrew McCutcheon, Aaron Judge, Aaron Hicks at the top of the order. John Carlos Stanton, Luke Voigt, Didi Gregorius in the middle with Miguel Andujar, Gary Sanchez, and Glaber Torres rounding out the starting nine for the 100 win Yankees for the 97 win Athletics. It is 29 year old Aussie Liam Hendricks. And he will not be around long. The A's are hoping he is around long enough to at least get through the first inning. He is a reliever making a start in a postseason game. What a strange story this is. His ninth opener, eight and two thirds innings, tells you everything. Have to change the vernacular how we think about the Oakland A's here tonight. There's been the talk of the opener, there's been talk of the quote unquote. Air quote starter. How about the initial outgetter? He's the guy on the mound to get the initial outs because we have a bunch of outgetters 
here tonight for the A's. It is highly probable that the Yankees hitters will not face the same pitcher twice. You, you use the plural of outs, right? Not just out. <laughs> out. Oh, depends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a loaded bullpen. So in the wild card game, you do manipulate the roster just a little bit. It's a 25 man roster, but you don't need your four starters that you would need in a division series. So the bullpens are loaded up. You know, it's interesting when you see that bullpen out there, Eck knows this better than I. Usually they've got their seeds, they've got their conversation. Yeah. You know what they've got? A lather. Oh, They're all lathered goodness. up, ready to go. Yeah, there's nothing like this, I'll tell you. And all of a sudden, talk about a short leash. Guy goes three and one, and somebody might get up. You're right. <laughs> and they're waiting for that phone to ring. Three balls and a strike on Andrew McCutcheon, and he takes ball four right out of the gates. Liam Hendricks issues the walk. There is a lot on this for him as well. He is the first ever Australian pitcher to start a postseason game. This was a guy that was designated for assignment earlier this year, not pitching to the level where he could even stay on a major league roster, and yet he is on the mound now for the A's in the postseason. How did that happen, Ron? Well, uh, DFA, no one wanted him, went to Nashville, dealt, and got uh, the call back. Well, he's got to get it together in a hurry. It's fastball slider. Mostly cheese. <laughs> Here is Aaron Judge with a runner at first. And there is a strike right on the edge. Yankees fans so happy to see Judge back, and his manager is happy to see the kind of at bats that he produced toward the end of the year. He was out with that broken wrist. Lauren will have more on that story in a little while, but it didn't seem like it took long for Aaron Judge to get his rhythm and timing back once the wrist healed, but it did seem like it took a while to get the wrist healed. Well, you can tell right away that Hendricks is a little oh, overamped. Yeah. He's supposed to be throwing that ball in. Both pitchers were outside, but as far as Judge is concerned, this is Judge's generation. This is his team. This is his time. They will go as far as he brings them. Such a great nucleus of young players built for the long haul here. Guys like Judge, Glaber Torres having a fantastic rookie season. Miguel Andujar, those guys at the bottom of that lineup for both teams, really. You have your star sluggers for sure, but down at the bottom of that lineup could play huge in this one game play in to go to the American League Division Series. One ball, one strike. Judge takes a ball inside to Croy, the veteran catcher, trying to settle down his starter. There's no doubt he's geeked out yeah. right now. I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, he's just out there for one inning, really. All into one. You know, it's just all of the pressure into just one inning. Two balls and a strike. And a draw. Oh. Deep left. Two nothing Yankees. This ball. Talk about a no doubter. Larger than life on the big stage. Aaron Judge, who hit 27 home runs this year, he came back in mid September, hit just one home run, and he launches one here in the first inning. Worst case scenario for the Oakland Athletics. Fastball, look, sitting all over it. That's not one of his best fastballs, especially when the guy's looking for it and he lifts. This big man lifts this ball out of here. Tell me the damage. I, I don't even know how far that was. <laughs> Bullpen already active. John Kelly getting loose. He was going to be the get out of trouble guy, and Hendricks is in it. Maybe now Hendricks can settle in a little bit. That's a good slider there under the hands of Aaron Hicks. One ball, two strikes. Aaron Judge puts the Yankees on the board quickly in the first inning. This is the problem when you say premeditatively, I'm going to put throw six or seven pitchers out there. Mm. The problem is, does that mean every single one is going to be perfect? I doubt it. Someone's going to give up something. 
and in this first inning it's happened to Hendricks. Heart racing. They say the A's that he has the perfect temperament for a game like this. He's been in this role hasn't pitched the multiple inning outing to success but that one was right in the wheelhouse and Hendricks knew it from the time it left the bat. You're just trying to throw a strike right there. There's just really not a whole lot of conviction. You're just trying to get it over. And those are the kind that go a long ways. Well, Bob Melvin knows he's got a team that can bang with the best of them. They can score some runs and they've been a great run scoring team on the road this year. So it is all about survival here in this first inning and then try to settle into the plan. And, and when the Yankees score first believe me they're almost 700 ball. Yeah. Great year for Aaron Hicks. 27 homers match Judge this year in the regular season. Judge missing a third of the schedule. But Hicks has turned himself into a terrific performer. You can see Hendricks' body language, very anxious, very antsy uh, here in the first inning. A natural feeling. Two balls, two strikes. And it goes full. Well, nobody's shocked, are you? I yeah. mean, you knew somebody's going to go bridge, right? I mean, <laughs> it's just a matter of how many. <laughs> now, this is a club that can hit a lot of home runs, the Open A's, especially on the road. See third base coach Matt Williams there, great slugger in his own right. Kelly continues to get loose. 15 pitches for Liam Hendricks. He's still looking for his first out. That's a shot right to first. And there is out number one. Olsen, a potential gold glove first baseman, has that one right into his glove. Statcast AI, powered by Amazon Web Services, leaves the bat 116 miles an hour. Maybe a little top spin. He didn't get it spinning the other way. I, I've thrown that many times. It hurts your family's feelings <laughs> when you give up one like that. Here is Giancarlo Stanton. Awesome. Well, not to mention what a home run like that does for the rest of your offense, settles you in. Yeah, Jeff Nelson, former Yankee pitcher, opener. Booting on Coming the opener. In hot on the opener already. <laughs> Now one thing we are we know we will see we are going to see with the A's they're going to have high velocity power stuff coming out of the bullpen all night long in a, in a bullpen game though if I can be a little more traditional when you get two runs two points in the first mm -hmm. that makes Severino calm down. Oh that yeah. Great. yeah I can give up a long one. Stan a big swing at a miss. Stan participating in his first postseason. Those three outfielders in Miami a year ago all traded away. I mean, what a year each of them had. Marcelo Zuna and Christian Yelich, a likely MVP in the NL, and Stanton. And Yelich and Stanton end up in the postseason. Difficult part of this ballpark is that a guy like Stanton, who is so strong, can miss and be late on a fastball. And dump it into the right field stands. Two and two, and he jammed him. A foul into the screen. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Well, you got to keep it right there. He can't get to that ball. He can't get to the ball up. But he's got long arms. He's got great plate coverage, even though he's off the plate and closed. Another two two. Now Stan comes into this postseason. Hot. He finished September in his last 11 at bats. He had seven hits, including three home runs. So he finishes the year with 38 bombs and 100 RBIs. At 266 for the season. Stanton fouls that one back. Had a good cut. Fastball on the inner half. And the pitch count rising here for Hendricks. It gets scary here, you know, sitting fastball, getting fastball. These guys can. Get the head out when they know what's coming. You're trying to pitch him in, but you need to throw a strike. Yeah. See what he gives him on the 3 2 and tied him up. Buried that fastball inside and a strikeout and the second out. So McCutcheon draws the walk. Aaron Judge with the two run homer. Now back to back outs on the liner in the strikeout. That ball ran in and ate him alive.
the Yankees set a major league record this year for home runs as a team. And up and down their lineup it is an impressive showing when they take batting practice I wouldn't want to be a pitcher here's Luke Voigt high pop up didn't quite catch it and Hendricks survives the first but the Yankees strike and it is their premium bat in the lineup who is back and healthy Aaron Judge leaves the bat one hundred and sixteen miles an hour a blast and it's two nothing Yankees. Oakland Athletics have the most prolific home run hitter in the major leagues. This is the spray chart of Chris Davis and he is ready to lead off here. Takes a 98 mile an hour fastball. It's a major inning here for Davis. He has huge power center field opposite field and we'll see if the Athletics can answer against Luis Severino who is throwing BBs early in this game. That, that was just a beautiful second. chart wasn't it. I mean. <laughs> 48 bombs sprinkled everywhere. <laughs> now the A's hit 227 home runs this year. Of course, the New York Yankees, the team that led all of baseball, and that one is just fouled, just missed the bag at first. Greg Gibson over there, the first base umpire. Activity in that bullpen for the Athletics with Lou Trevino. Normally a late game reliever. He'll have the second, it looks like. And Davis fouls this one away. He's going to be seeing a lot of balls yeah. down and away. Anything up in the strike zone is a danger area for Chris Davis. Anything on the outside part of the strike zone, even though he steps in the bucket, he's able to cover that pitch. One and two, and Davis a swing and a miss. Down he goes on strikes. That's the third strikeout to the fourth batter face for Severino. Severino came out throwing gas in the first inning and then he goes to his slider and a lot of good sliders and finishes him off 
with as good as you can go. You, you could really see the game plan is different on Davis than some of the other hitters. In the first inning, all fastballs, one slider to Chapman. Here comes out with a variety of sliders, as X said, to Davis. Here is Matt Olson. A's have so many sluggers up and down their lineup. Olson hit 29 this season, played in all 162 games. Got a chance to be a gold glove first baseman. If not this year, then in years to come. Been a great find for the A's. He can pick it. Uh, that's what he yeah. does. Probably one of the best. It makes it an excellent defensive infield for the Athletics. And then they bring some thump as well. Nobody hit more home runs on the road than the Athletics this year. Their entire defense is strong. And they want to get into that kind of game. But Aaron Judge had other ah. ideas in the first with a two run homer to give the Yankees the lead. And once again, Severino in a two strike count. Well, I don't know when it started. I always thought it started with the great Ron Guidry when he would get the two strikes. Oh. And the Yankee Stadium crowd would anticipate the strikeout. They've been up since the beginning with two strikes tonight. It's like 40 years ago, man. <laughs> I remember like it was yesterday. 2-2 two -two is a breaking ball low. That's a good take by Matt Olson. I love his uh, stance. He kind of just lays the bat over the middle of the plate. Looks like it's on get, its way. Looked like he could get the fastball in on him. His hands are so far away. Here's a payoff. And a swing and a foul. Olson just got a piece. So takes a 2 2 slider in the dirt, fouls one off 3 2. That's pretty impressive. A lot of these Oakland Athletic players in their first postseason, and the same goes for the New York Yankees. They've got a number of players competing in the postseason for the first time. If you're Bob Melvin, just trying to settle into this game and start to play your game as soon as you can. Olsen chased one, able to get a bat on a 98 mile an hour heater. You know, as a pitcher, I think, Jack, you can feel when the momentum. Jumps in your dugout, two run home run, 116 miles an hour, bomb. You know, as a pitcher, this is the most important time to this throw is the, for zero. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shut down. Severino is, does have an ERA of 254 in those shutdown innings throughout the regular season. Almost got away. Sanchez catches it. That's another part of the story with Severino on the mound, but that's the first blemish. That is a walk and the first base runner for the Athletics. Hey, a reminder, don't miss the Colorado Rockies and the Milwaukee Brewers. Game 1, 5 p.m. Eastern on FS1, followed by the Braves and the Dodgers. Game 1 on MLB Network. That's at 8.30 p.m. National League Division Series. Presented by Doosan. So the A's finally get a man on here. Steven Piscotti. Who has had some big moments in the postseason, ah. then as a Cardinal performing against the Chicago Cubs back in the 2015 postseason. Cardinals lost that series. Piscotty hit three home runs and had six RBIs, and he looked like the best player on the field in that series for the Cardinals. He was not afraid of the moment. Now let's check in with Lauren. She's got more on the Piscotty story, and it's a good one. Lauren? Yeah, B.A., the St. Louis Cardinals traded Stephen Piscotty to the A's December 14th so he could be with his mother who was battling ALS, a disease that eventually took her life. In his first game back, he had a towering home run at Fenway over the Green Monster. He said it was a moment of pure joy born out of pure pain. His numbers since then have steadily increased. His dad, Mike, an Oakland A's ticket holder for 25 years, says his wife is watching over their son and giving him the same pep talk she always did hit the snot out of the ball, Stephen. <laughs> I love that story, Lauren. Thank you. And it's, uh, Ace fans know it well. It was one of the most touching moments of the year, one of the great images of the season. Homering, the game he comes back. Oh, and he has been homering ever since. He has been on a tear since early June. Finished the year with 27 home runs. He had 24 of those. We spent a lot of time in the clubhouse talking to Bob Melvin and Billy Bean and they expressed to us how important their clubhouse culture and chemistry has been. They're a low key team that doesn't panic. They score a lot of runs late. They hit the ball out of the ballpark. 
136 home runs on the road led baseball. So this is a team that's just not going to go away here. You're talking about scoring late tons of runs tons. and especially in September. Piscotti able to lay off a tough slider. Well last year the Athletics lost 95 games. This year they flipped that they won 97. Things really clicked right before the All-Star break for Bob Melvin. He said it was about June that he and Billy Bean started to text back and forth. They didn't see each other for six weeks but they were texting back and forth that this team has a feel about it. We should make a run or consider making a run. Here's a call strike three. Severino lands that breaking ball. Piscotti is retired and that's strikeout number four. Spicotti, Spicotti, he's looking for something else. This is a slider that doesn't really break all that much. He just took it. I don't know if necessarily froze him with he was looking for something else. But I'll tell you what, Severino will take it. Threw it right at his hip, buckled him. Here's Ramon Laureano now, the rookie. He gets to start in this postseason. You know his nerves are bouncing at this point. He's been a great add to the A's as well. You get to the bottom of this Oakland order with Laureano and Simeon and Lucroy. Got some hitters in this region that see a lot of pitches per plate appearance. They'll put the ball in play. Laureano, a little over anxious, chases that breaking ball. It wasn't that long ago that offenses would try to work a pitcher work his pitch count mm -hmm. to get him out of there to get to the bullpen can't do that against the Oakland A's tonight it's all bullpen guys are just going to go an inning but the A's can do that to Severino work that pitch count one ball one strike well I tell you what a ton of sliders this inning I mean, he's just changing lanes and he's not holding back anything he's just <laughs> trying to get out. It's like closing. It's, every inning is like closing a game. How about that? One slider in the first. He's thrown 14 already in the second inning. Issue to walk to Olsen, who's at first with two away. Two balls and a strike on the rookie. Laureano takes outside. Change up. Heck, if you had the fastball I mean, that really. Severino had in the first inning, would you come out in the second? With 14 sliders and a changeup? No. <laughs> if I had his hair, I mean, I would just get carried away. <laughs> Nobody's got hair like you, Eric. <laughs> Nobody. But I know the other kind the of other hair. The other kind of hair. <laughs> that kind of hair. You'll see it. <laughs> the hair that is 98. Here's a 3 1. Loriano had a good cut out. He was right on it. Fouls it back. It's 3 and 2. That's going to be traveling time for the runner at first, Matt Olson, and they're back on their feet here at Yankee Stadium. Boy, I tell you, he throws him a slider on the black right now. Punch out the side here. Change up. Runner goes. 3 2, fouled away. I mean, he's a three pitch pitcher. He really is. You just don't happen to see it all that often early in the game. Not a big fan of the changeup right hander to right hander. No, neither am I. It stays in the middle of the plate moving in. Comes it right ends up you. spinning the bat up. Speeding the bat up. Most of his strikeouts coming on the slider. Olsen goes. A swing and a miss. It's a strikeout. Severino strikes out three more. He's got five already. Two nothing Yankees.
remind you the MLB at bat app brings every postseason moment to your favorite devices. You can catch every moment with features such as live radio broadcast, pitch tracking, in game highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Lou Trevino on the mound, normally a late game pitcher. Eck, he is now in this game in the second inning. I don't know where they'd be without this young rookie. I tell you what, he lit it up in the first half. Had a 1.22 ERA, unheard of. Second half's been a little different, especially September. He's got an 8 ERA, but he's well rested, ready to bring it tonight. Celebrated his 27th birthday two days ago. And D.D. Gregorius, little chopper. And the shift was on. No chance to get the speedy Gregorius. The A's do shift a lot. They try to put their defenders in the right position. And that time it might have cost him. Well, the way the shift was there against Gregorius, it really was only Chapman who could have made that play. Once it got past him, it got to Lowry. There's no way they're going to throw out the speedy Gregorius. That's his buzzer luck, man. I mean, a little chopper over your head. Unreachable? Ugh. Well, Ronnie, talk to us about this Oakland defense because by all accounts, you talk to opponents this year, this is one of the tightest infield defenses in the major leagues. And they've all come from different places. Matt Chapman, he's been able to pick it since he's like five years old. He's been always <laughs> great with the leather. But Marcus Simeon went through a stage where he made a lot of errors early in his career. Lowry is the steady veteran, and Matt Olson, like you said, uh, he's going to get a gold glove there someday at first base. Miguel Andujar. A fabulous rookie season for the Yankees. What a pick there by Jonathan Lucroy. And remember, all these pitchers that are coming in for the for the Athletics, they're new to this scene. So they, you're, you're recreating <laughs> the pressure of the moment every time out. It's tough to settle in. But they've leaned on this kid now. He's yeah. went more than an inning 18 times. I mean, nowadays that doesn't happen. Gregorius at first, and Duhar takes off the plate. Well, Andujar with 27 home runs this year. He drove at 92. I mean, you could not ask for more production from a rookie than what the Yankees got about out of Andujar. He hit 297 as well. The doubles machine. Yeah, he broke the longtime Yankees doubles record set by Joe DiMaggio. 1936, he broke a record that's been holding up all this time. Forty seven doubles this year. Ho hum took it, DiMaggio down. Yeah and he also tied Fred Lynn by the way of the seventy five Red Sox tying the most doubles in a season in the AL. That one's up and in straightens him up at ninety nine and it's three and oh. You know, like you said Ron you run seven guys out there. I mean you got to get not so much lucky but I mean. The odds go against you the more guys you run out there. Uh, well, the odds also of will each of them be able to handle this big yeah, moment. Yeah, true. 3 0 to Andujar. And taking all the way, it's ball four. An infield hit and a walk for Trevino to start his night. That's so true, Ronnie. I mean, you've got to handle this moment. I forget that sometimes. <laughs> I mean, we were sitting up here with this. Guess what, man? This is a major moment for every guy that grabs that ball. So two on, nobody out. And here comes Gary Sanchez. And you can't go to sleep here and just try to throw Sanchez something down the middle to get ahead. He is a free swinger. He's had a difficult year, but starting in the postseason, all that year has been washed away. Yeah. He could start new. Sanchez hit 186 this year. It was just a monumental struggle for him. Dealt with injuries, had a tough time coming back from those injuries. Last year, a 278 hitter, high slugging. That batting average of 186, lowest average in Yankee history for any player that had at least 300 at bats. And he is in there to hit. He is a strong arm catcher, but he's had his troubles catching the ball, framing the ball. And so he's in there to swing the bat. He's missing badly, yeah. and that's why this is a good time for Emerson to come out. Yeah, Scott Emerson, their their pitching coach, there's a couple of things that he's going to have to do. He knows he has a lot of young pitchers that he's probably talked to before the game. He knows his pitchers better than anyone else. He knows he's overthrowing, so it's just going to let him know, remind him of that. 
So a 1 0 count. Trevino against Gary Sanchez. For more on Sanchez, let's check in with Lauren. BA Brian Cashman has been steadfast in his support for Gary, even if at times the effort level, like you were talking about, hasn't seemed there. Brian told me, look, we know he's a difference maker at the plate. We know the ceiling is high on both sides of the ball. We're sticking with him. Gary did come in to get some work in the cage the last off day, to which Cashman told me he's really trying to unlock what he knows is there. Plain and simple, from what I'm told, they believe when he's right, the Yankees ah. are a better team with Sanchez on the field despite the struggles. BA. Yeah, no question. They are carrying, however, three catchers. Austin Romine, Kyle Higashioka. Ace carry two catchers on their roster. Most teams do unless you have an offensive minded catcher like uh, Gary Sanchez. But he's going to get the call. That was as big of an announcement than the Severino announcement. That was almost 1A. Who's your starter for the wild card game? Who's your starter behind the plate? He's in a big spot early. Two on, nobody out. One ball, one strike. Boy, he lets it fly. You know he is. He's looking for something he could pull. He just can't get there. This ball is perfect pitch. That ball down and away. That's the best pitch Trevino has thrown so far. Maybe that bound visit paid off from Scott Emerson. Sanchez, like many of the right handed hitters for the Bronx Bombers, tremendous power to right field, too. Trevino could use a double play Ooh. ball. He misses with 99. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was thinking, how can they catch Sanchez the way that he was catching? He caught a game with Severino where the first inning he had, what, four, two wild pitches, two pass mm -hmm. balls. It was just awful. They ended up screaming at each other in the dugout and on the mound. Well, yeah. What he does offensively certainly changes the perspective. There's a ground ball. Got a chance here. Simeon flips to Lowry. Easy double play. 6 4 3 it goes. Just what Trevino needed. Runner at third with two outs now. Let's take a look at tonight's playmakers presented by the Chrysler Pacifica. And how about these two rookies for the New York Yankees? All these years here in New York, you've got the big bats, you've got the big free agents coming here, but this starts to feel more like the core four. You know, you've got a new version of that. And, and Duhar and Torres, Torres, the all star this year, they have been tremendous. That core four is Aaron Judge. You got to throw Severino in there. Yeah, I think so. And a wave and a miss. Over anxious on the first pitch slider. What a big pitch by Trevino. Trevino. He oh, threw yeah. two perfect sliders one for a swing and miss, and one for the ground ball double play. Well done. He's got some leverage on that slider, too. This is a big boy. Labor Torres hitting in the nine spot for the Yankees. Andrew McCutcheon, the lead man, do next. Runner at third. Yankees up 2 0 on an Aaron Judge first inning home run. And a wave and a miss. He went back to that little slider. Is that at 95? A I'm, little cut? That's a piece, or what is that? I at? mean, that's a cut. I mean, that's as hard <laughs> as you can throw a cutter. I've seen a guy, Evaldi, with the Red Sox that has, I thought, the hardest cutter I've ever seen. But that one right there, I'll tell you, it says slider, but it might be a cutter. Gotta be heads up for a wild pitch. Here's the 0-2 and it's in the dirt. Jonathan Lucroy is the ace catcher. He signed a one-year deal prior to the season. That was a great find for the Oakland Athletics. He brings a lot of leadership, but he's got great skill behind the plate, especially blocking balls. They're talking about not only blocking balls, uh, big throwouts on huge stolen base attempts, and also when he's not playing, he's like an extra coach that you have on your ball club. Pitcher number two, Lou Trevino. Strike away from getting out of this one and a fly ball slicing into foul territory. Piscotti runs out of room. Unlike Oakland. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> there is very little foul territory here, especially when you get down to yeah. the lines. I tell you, Brian, at least you you think like a pitcher, right? I mean, somebody else would just say, that's oh, a foul ball. A pitcher in right? Oakland, you're sitting on the on yeah. the bench, right? You're already heading that's into the That's an out dugout. is what that is. <laughs> Well, these athletics are hoping to bring a postseason game to Oakland this year. They'll have to advance and bring the Red Sox with them. Got to have an out here. Mm, big one. Got to have third. Totally. 
Big lead for Gregorius and a Look swing a and a miss. Lucroy blocks, secures it with the tag, and the side is retired. Settled down nicely. Lou Trevino. Well, we're running back on Friday. How about a doubleheader of American League Division Series action? Indians Astros, 2 p.m. Eastern, and then either the Yay A's of the Yankees against the Red Sox. Game one, 7:30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 1:30. MLB postseason pregame show on TBS, presented by the Chrysler Pacifica. Do it again Saturday as well. Great time of year. Great to be with you on this beautiful night, Wednesday night in New York. A's Yankees. Wild card matchup in the American League. Marcus Simeon. Ron, you talked about Simeon a little bit defensively and his improvements there. And he's also had a nice year with the bat. 15 home runs, 70 runs batting in, hitting at the bottom of this order typically. I know. You throw a hitter at the bottom of the order with 70 stakes, you know, 70 RBIs. That's amazing. But I think it's all the hard work he's put in defensively and offensively to become one of their better players. Luis Severino has been electric so far. Five strikeouts, first seven batters he's faced. So the first six outs have been via the K. Fielders have been optional at this point. Just the one ball put in play for an out on the 5 3 put out. Simeon fouls it back. Part of the story, talking to Aaron Boone before the game, there's a lot of reasons why he went with Luis Severino. And Aaron managing in his first postseason. One of the reasons was how well opponent pitchers do against the Athletics, who have the big velocity. The pitchers who throw 97 miles an hour or greater as Severino walks Marcus Simeon. So the Oakland A's are dead last in a lot of the major categories batting average, slugging percentage, miss percentage, dead last in the major leagues, 30th with. With pitchers on the mound opposing them who throw 97 miles an hour up. 97 uh, or more. Anyone around 95, they rake because they do the hunt the fastball. Yeah. But you're right. Uh, against the talent uh, like Severino, you sometimes can makes it more difficult. You can second guess this move. Oh, I mean, yeah. It didn't work out because you're talking about Hap 
that who they could have went to and he's had some good numbers against the A's and you know the thing is Hap has good numbers against the Red Sox so they're trying to get two for one here you know. I, I live in this town I asked all my friends that are Yankee fans Hap was number one Tanaka thought, was number two Severino was their choice a number three starter. Jonathan oh. Lucroy oh. takes a strike bit of a late call by Randy Wolf. Well, Luke, Luke Roy caught his brother. He can complain to Randy. That's right. Yeah, that was that was a tenuous relationship. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of visits to the mound. Luke Roy would have never have survived a Randy Wolf start if they had the mound visits roll right now. <laughs> Very intricate set of signs, Randy Wolf, the left-hander. And Luke Roy rolls one foul. So what you need now here for the A's, they don't have a lot of speed. Uh, but they can use some intelligence here. Dirt ball read. You know yeah. the balls that are yeah. in the dirt that they can read and advance a base with Sanchez catching and the nastiness of the Severino pitching. Yeah, but it's up. amazing how they have no speed. I mean 35 stolen bases is pathetic. They just want to hit the ball. Yeah. The ball. No, no stolen bases but they will be aggressive first to third. They'll try to push it especially balls hit to left field with McCushion. They will try to push that as Luke Roy chased. Down he goes. Strikeout number six. First time through the batting order. Six punch outs. Well, hooray for 98 mile an hour gas. He's been we've been featuring sliders galore the last two innings. This one a good one. You don't see LaCroix make that kind of swing. He's he can handle a bat so well and it made him look bad. So back to the top of the order now. A's go 0 for 7 with two walks first time through against Severino fires one over the void. Athletics have had two runners on via the walk Matt Olson drew a one out walk and then a walk from Simeon to start this third inning Marcus Stroman checking in tonight good to see you there Marcus. Yeah, nasty he's, sliders he's talking about that slider to Scotty. And that one's right in the middle of the strike zone Nick Martini back around now he struck out looking. First three pitches of the game by Severino all fastballs all up there 96 to 97 to 98 and Martini had an about face. That's how the game started and it was noisy. Uh, bouncing ball. Voigt's got it. Fires to second. Bad throw and Gregorius with a heck of a play not just to catch the ball but to get a toe on the bag for the lead out. Well this is what we were talking about before. Is that the infield defense of the Yankees is not always up to snuff. It looked like for a while that Simeon was going to run on that play. He did not. And you see the throw by Voigt, a better offense, uh, defensive play by D.D. Gregorius, who's a rock in this infield. Well, this he, is a double play ball. You got to yeah. turn two right here. Severino's covering first, but they're lucky that ball is just not left field. Yankees dead last in the American League in turning double plays this year. And what it does is allow Matt Chapman to get an at bat here in this third inning. Two nothing Yankees on a judge home run. This is the guy that has lit Oakland on fire right now. He has been a terrific player in his second year. Showed great flashes last year in the second half once he was called up. But he popped 24 this season. And a star defensively. Also a potential Gold Glove Award winner. At third base. I know you can't assume a double play, but to me, this fits in the category of giving a team an extra out. Oh, yeah. Boyd coming to the Yankees from the Cardinals. It's been a revolving door at first base for New York. Noticeably absent from this wild card roster is Greg Bird. And the way Boyd's been hitting the ball and hitting with power. He gets the starts at first base right now. They want his bat in there. Judge, the second place hitter, hit a two run home run on a 2 1 fastball. Will Chapman get one? Their second place hitter. Martini, the runner at first, has good speed. And Matt Chapman. Change up? That's incredible. I mean, pretty good spot for a change up, but. So to me, it looks like Wolf. We'll call the ball a little up in the strike zone, but across the knees, he is not always giving that pitch. Jim Wolf 
He's been an umpire in a World Series. It's a second wild card game, and that one is in there. So it burns off the edge, and it goes to 3 2. Jed Lowry, the switch hitter, do next. He's the trickster man. 3 1 changeup from a guy bringing it. <laughs> Yankees fans hungry for another strikeout. He's sitting on six. Runner takes off Martini and a ground ball foul. Chapman able to hang in there. I've been impressed with his secondary stuff. Huh? I mean, not afraid to throw it anytime. He's a different pitcher tonight. He's, he's you know, he's not just going at it. He's trying to be a pitcher, not yeah. a thrower. Another 3 2. Martini goes and a drive to right. They had him played perfectly. Judge is there. Chapman hits it hard. Inning is over. Still 2 nothing, New York. Want to stay up to date? Hey Siri, show me the MLB postseason schedule. The facade, the famous facade at this version of Yankee Stadium. And the postseason returns. The wild card game is here for the second consecutive season. Luis Severino, much better performance to start this one. He's got three scoreless on the board with six strikeouts. Back on the mound is Lou Trevino. It'll be his second inning of work. And back to the top of the Yankees batting order McCutcheon Judge and Aaron Hicks. The game could have got away from the A's in that inning first two runners got on nobody out and Trevino got the ground ball from Sanchez for the double play huge pitch. Two on nobody out he gets double play strikeout to finish the inning. And a clean inning for the A's, and they needed to see that one on the board. Huge mound visit for Emerson. Got to give him some love, right? Pitching coaches never get anything. There he is. Two balls and a strike on McCutcheon. Shift was on. And Simeon makes a play for out. Number one, moments ago, Lauren caught up with Oakland A skipper Bob Melvin. 
Bob, your team got to Severino in September. What's been the difference tonight? Well, he's gotten off to a good start. He's throwing hard. He's mixing in his breaking ball and change up probably a little more than we thought early on. Game seven scenario. What's your message the rest of the way? Just play it like it's a regular game with a lot of emotion. That's all you can do. I mean, baseball is not made for this, but a lot of theatrics. The fans love it. So you got to try to stay within yourself, but play with some emotion. Appreciate it, Bob. Thanks. A big swing and a miss by Aaron Judge. Our thanks to Bob Melvin, two-time manager of the year. 2007 with the D-backs, 2012 with the A's. He is the likely manager of the year in the American League this season. A team that started with the lowest payroll in baseball to begin the year. They've moved all the way up to 28th with some of their additions, but here they are with a 97 win season. It's been a phenomenal job he's done. In fact, Billy Bean and Bob Melvin said that this team reminds them a lot of the 2012 ball club. Well, they had it going on 2012, 13, and 14. They did. Aaron Judge down 0 2 and a swing and a miss. Trevino wipes him out. Talk to me about that slider, huh? Cutter, slider, who cares? That is nasty. Well, he kept everything down. He was able to go inside with the fastball before the slider. Act. Perfect. He missed that by a lot. Well, the Athletics. You heard Lauren reference the game Severino pitched against the A's in Oakland. I mean, they do feel like they have enough firepower to jump back in this game quickly, no question. Severino gave up six runs, five earned in two and two thirds in a game against the A's in Oakland on September 5th. So those are the last memories. Severino came out throwing mostly fastballs early, but a lot of breaking stuff late. You heard Melvin reference the changeups he's thrown. Just two walks he's allowed thus far. Well, I know this is a bullpen game, but if you have some feel, you might have to pitch Trevino the yeah. rest of the way. <laughs> Trevino seven times this year on pitched two or more innings. So this is not a stretch for him. Postseason pitching is a lot more stressful than regular season pitching, right? As far as taxing on the arm, but He's done it. He's been out there. He's had to go sit down and return to the mound before. So his pitch is that slider. He gets guys yeah. swinging, missing it by a lot. Well, his deception is he's so big, has so many arm movements, neck movements, shoulder movements, can never pick up the ball. Aaron Hicks takes it for ball two. Counted his favorite two and one. Boy, what a year Hicks had, right? I mean, flies under the radar with all the all stars and MVPs. Uh, that the Yankees have what 27 home runs 79 RBI he has turned himself into a solid player hard to fall under the radar hitting third in a Yankees lineup but that's exactly how it's been for Hicks who takes yeah. a strike he got off last year yes. you know and then got hurt and then this year he's just done it all year long for them you know no one really knew what was going to happen when he came from uh, the twins they traded him for Murphy the catcher yeah. and he sort of got lost somewhere I think he's in Arizona right. Yep. Yeah John Ryan Murphy. Two to the count two outs in the inning Trevino looking for a quick one and a little weak swing Trevino makes a play. Now the A's needed to see that three up and three down the Yankees jumped out early on an Aaron Judge homer nothing since.
Severino three in the book six punch outs kind of two different pitchers the first inning he had the gas he saw the two punch outs then he went to the slider after that and he had a good one has some depth to that thing a pair of shoes by Piscotti you see a swing and miss there and he just looked great he brings out the break well two different pitchers he's going to the fourth no hits and Jed Lowry leads off the lazy fly ball out to McCutcheon a former gold glover and one pitch and one out for Severino. Moments ago, Lauren caught up with Yankees first year skipper manager Aaron Boone. Aaron Severino's dominance has gone to the slider a lot. What have you seen so far? Well, the slider has a good shape to it. When it kind of looks like that curveball or breaking ball and it's in the 80s, that's usually a good sign. But I've liked his fastball as well. Hey, Aaron judges wrist okay? What do you think? I'd say he uh, he made a statement with that first one. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was interesting that Lauren asked him uh, about Severino. It's exactly what you were saying. It's almost like he came to the bench after the first inning, and his pitching coach probably said to him, "Hey, listen, you were dominant in the first, but don't forget to use your breaking stuff." It's almost like that's what happened. Which might tell you that at some point. For a guy who manages to keep velocity throughout his starts, he may return to those big fastballs. We'll keep an eye on it. Chris Davis at the plate, struck out swinging in the second inning. Pound for pound, mm. strongest man in the game. Tell you I what. mean, he's not a big man. We've seen Judge hit a two run home run here. This guy had the most home runs in the major leagues, and he's half the size of Judge. Oof. A lot of MVPs on. The Oakland A's with this guy. How, what would they do without 48 bombs? And he pulls that one, and Duhar hits the ground, and a low throw. Boy, can't dig it out, and an error by Duhar. That has been a problem for the New York Yankees. The third baseman comparison in this game is drastic from Chapman to Duhar. First, it's an amazing play to get to that ball, but. You know he just was lazy with his throw kind of just flicked it over there. He had plenty of time once he got to it to stand up tall and throw a bullet over there. But the ball bounces. Voigt is not the best at picking that ball out of the dirt. Yeah it did look like all that tough of a pick but just another bad throw a little sidearm piece. He's made a couple nice picks tonight. It's the throwing that's the problem. So for the A's four. Batters have reached base. Two walks. Martini reached on a fielder's choice on a ball that should have been a double play. And now Davis reaches on the E5. And Olsen ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. So when you're ahead by two runs, X said before, you're not afraid to give up the solo shot. But when you give up extra outs, mm -hmm. all of a sudden one swing and all of that good feeling from the judge home run is gone. What's he going to do 2 0 here? Yankees with the shift on with Olsen, and he's late. Fouls it away. Got a 2 0 pitch and was behind it. Ball's upstairs there. I thought he might try to trick him. Athletics still looking for their first hit. 2 2 now. Matt Olson hit 29 during the regular season. 25 of those came against right handed pitching. It could be a scenario late in a game with a guy like a Roldish Chapman available as the closer where you might see a pinch hitter. But this is not a batter that the Athletics would want to pinch hit for. Otherwise, it's that scenario alone that you would do it but we'll see how Bob Melvin wants to play it. He was pretty adamant. How about you, the left right. How do you lay off a hundred. I don't know how you have a hundred after all those sliders. <laughs> this is the sixth three two count and that's way inside and Olsen draws the walk. So here come the athletics an error and now a walk Olsen's walked mm -hmm. twice mm -hmm. two on one away best opportunity for the A's thus far. Well, the pressure is going to mount a little bit there. You know, he didn't want to make a mistake there to Olsen. Did not. Well, this would be an interesting time, in my estimation, for the pitching coach to go out and, and say, listen, you're throwing the ball 99, 100 miles an hour. Let's get back to establishing command of that fastball. 
pitching the slider off the fastball and you'll have more success. That was hard as you can fastball you know yeah, that ball he threw right. down and in. I mean more success he hasn't given up a hit but you know what you're saying <laughs> he's putting, yeah. him, putting himself in harm's way. I know I okay. did. <laughs> We're dogging a guy who's got no hits. <laughs> Larry Rothschild checking the lineup here. And those available in the bullpen so the Yankees are carrying nine relievers today of the group of nine J Happ. Masahiro Tanaka, Lance Lynn, all starters, of course. Lynn will, prob Lynn will probably go into the bullpen the rest of the way. As Steven Piscotti is late, fouls it away. To me, this guy might be their toughest out. I just, he sees the ball so well. He just sees the breaker ball. He took a front door breaker ball last mm -hmm. time up. Had a big September. 25 RBIs in the month that led the American League. In a big spot for Oakland, down a pair, and Piscotti able to lay off slider away, and it's a ball and a strike. You see a guy lay off your slider, it scares you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It does. It's like, uh oh. First time the Athletics have had a runner in scoring position tonight. They've had two runners stranded, both at first. One ball, one strike on Piscotti. He was late, and he fouls it away. Well, he went after him there. Ball had the temperature on it, though. Beat him. And here comes the Yankee Stadium crowd again. Yes. Yankees play it straight up. Looking for a double play ball. Piscotti, no, did he, he go? He did not. First base umpire, Greg Gibson. Not too many guys hold up on that slider right there. Well, Gibson having the frame of mind, sometimes it's hard to not call that a swing when you got 50,000 people <laughs> on top of you. Piscotti has big power, center field, opposite field. Two and two, and he hits one right off the end of the bat. It's going to slice out to Judge, and everybody retreats. It's a big out for Severino. He gets Piscotti. That's the second out of the inning. First and second now for Ramon Laureano, the rookie. You know, we always talk about the short porch here in Yankee Stadium. What we don't talk about is that the outfielders play shallow enough that that ball right there in some ballparks might fall in for a base hit. Here, it never will. And Judge is a tremendous outfielder. Yankees have very strong arms in right field and center field. The Athletics will challenge McCutcheon in left field, even though he has the gold glove. Davis, the runner at second, reached on an error. Olsen, the runner at first, reached on a walk. And Laureano takes a strike. Ah! When your team's built on home runs, sometimes you can fall in love with them. Just a simple single here for the A's gets them right back in the game. Just a hit. Easier said than done. On two. He's never thrown so many sliders, I bet you, all year long. See what he has in mind here for Ramon Laureano. Two on, two out. Sanchez, a nice job, good block. Such a big part of the story, Gary Sanchez, and his ability to move, keep the ball in front, especially when a runner gets to third base. During the regular season, 34 pass balls. Yeah. But on point tonight, he's been good. Gives confidence to the pitcher. Another two strike pitch. Sanchez tried to stick the landing on the changeup. He didn't get the call. And the count evens at two balls and two strikes. Boy, he tries to dot his changeup right here. It's pretty good when he comes back a little bit, but it's outside. You know how hard it is as a right handed pitcher throwing that hard to dart a changeup yeah. away and down. Seventy five pitches for Severino. 
He's been careful, hasn't he? He has been careful. Before the game, yesterday's press conference, he said, I would like to go as long as I can, but I'll take four good yes. He did. He said, I'll take four. And every starting pitcher from years past fell off their chair. Here's the 2 2. And it is outside. 98. Boy, misses. Give, I might have walked off. <laughs> give Jim Wolf some credit. That ball's out off, off the plate just a little bit. And he makes the right call. And by wow. estimation. Man, I'll tell you what, on any given night, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted uh, everything. I know that, but that's, you know, good call, Hooray. Runners will start with the pitch. Three and two. Two outs. There they go. Loreano takes oh. a ball. Change up. Boy, Loreano. What a that bat that was. He just would not bite on the outer half and draws the walk, which is the fourth issued by Severino, which loads the bases with two outs. Larry Rothschild on his way out. I don't really understand, but he's been doing it all day, all night with this changeup stuff, three and two. You know, there used to be a thinking that for a pitcher in a big situation, you're not going to get beat with your third pitch. Right. And I consider his changeup his third pitch, totally. right? So slider might have been a better choice because Loriano swung through two, but what can you say? Again, we're hooting on a guy with a no hitter. And meanwhile, he could be off the field if he were to give him the ball in the corner. <laughs> Hey, a reminder, Bleacher Report gives you the moments that matter faster. Download the BR app today. Yankee Stadium in the Bronx on a beautiful night. This Wednesday night. Postseason was underway last night in dramatic fashion. Congratulations to the Colorado Rockies eliminating the Chicago Cubs in that extra inning win last night. Yankees score two here in the first. Now the A's with a golden opportunity. There are two outs. Here is Simeon. And a first pitch strike. This time he gets the call on the corner. Yeah, this is it for him. And the end is this is his whole night is right here. That's the first throw for Batanza. So it'll be at least two batters if this inning continues. You might see him though in the fifth. Simeon's been great with the bases loaded this year. A 364 hitter. Has emerged as one of the athletics leaders. One of the most improved defenders in the game. And a big chance for the swing and A's to get right back in this game. And now Sanchez is on his way out and got a couple of mound visits in this inning. This is similar to what we saw when he faced the A's earlier this year was a lot of mound visits. A lot of Severino calling Sanchez out. Aaron Boone said they're like brothers, but brothers can fight too <laughs> when things aren't working out correctly. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to think with him tonight, though. If yeah. you think about it, all these change-ups and sliders, and he's mixing it up so much, he's hard to call a game for tonight. Not a story just yet, but that's mound visit number three. Okay, halfway there. You get six this year on the rule change. Here's Simeon now. Big hack fouls it back. Yeah, that was the pitch. But it had some hair on it though. Heads up if you Chris Davis. That might be the slider in the dirt. No balls, two strikes. You got it. And a good play by Sanchez. Sanchez looks tight tonight. He looks Spot good. He's, he's caught the ball well too, right, Ronnie? Hands have been nice and soft, and he's making great. Catches on outside corner pitches to make them look like strikes and an excellent block here. But his movement to the side, spot on. He got that ball right in the middle of his body. Here's the one two and a swing and a miss. Severino fired up on his way out. The A's strand, the base is loaded. And if in fact it is the end for Severino, book him for seven punch outs. You think no he's hits. done?
American League wild card presented by Hankook Tire. Brian Anderson, the Hall of Famer, Dennis Eckersley, Ron Darling, Lauren Shahadi with you. Tonight's game produced by Scott Cockrell, directed by Matt Lip. Great to have you with us. It's been a good one so far. Aaron Judge with a two run bomb in the first inning before there was an out for the Yankees offensively. And now it is Stanton, Voigt, and Gregorius. And let's see how long Lou Trevino will be on the mound. He is pitching Ronnie in his third inning. And ever since. He put the first two on in the first. He's been lights out. Well, he's he's pitched three innings a couple of times this year, one time this year, but even more importantly, I think he's here to get the first two right-handed hitters out. Stand in the air to right field, coming in fast. Piscotti, he's got it for the out. Stanton is retired. And that's six in a row retired by Trevino. He's becoming the MVP for the Oakland A's here. So Bullpen is busy with Ryan Bookter and Sean Kelly up for the Oakland Athletics. If he can get Void here, Trevino will be done, and Bookter, I think, will face Didi Gregorius. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, well, the Oakland Athletics have 10 pitchers in their bullpen. Bookter is the only lefty in their pen. Here is Luke Voigt. Trevino, the pride of Slippery Rock University in Pennsylvania. Loving what he's doing right now. Falling behind Void 2 0. Void with big opposite field power. 62 games with the Cardinals last year. The Cardinals. Wanted to get Matt Carpenter back to first base regularly. They needed a left handed arm, so they made the trade with the Yankees. Jason Shreve went from New York to St. Louis, and that opened the door for Void here in New York. But nobody ah. expected this kind of power and production from Luke Voigt. He's it was busting out of his uni, man. He's. <laughs> didn't he? That's like he goes bridge. I go bridge. I <laughs> That's like Magnum P.I., yeah. middle of the 1970s. Came up August 2nd with the Yankees and he swings and fouls one away. It's a great story when he was in St. Louis, and I can't confirm that it is still ongoing. So Luke Voigt is from the St. Louis area. Matter of fact, went to the same high school as David Fries and Ryan Howard, but his grandmother, Grandma Joan, still pays him $25 for every home run he hits. She's running out of cash here, and this run he's been on with the Yankees. She wouldn't mind going to the bank again. Every time he hits a home run, Grandma Joan. Gets the phone call. He's had 14 homers in his last 32 games as a Yankee. Trevino's got him in a 2 2 count. Well, he hung one. Voigt fouls it away. Let's check in with Lauren for more on Luke Voigt. Yeah, BA, you said it. Luke Voigt went to the same high school and college as Ryan Howard. I spoke with their college coach, Keith Gutton of Missouri State. He told me Luke Voigt made Luke Voigt. He's always loved the weight room, always thought he could hit. It was a matter of not trying to hit the ball 600 feet every single time. He said Luke has an intense desire to succeed and is fiery as heck. <laughs> he looked up to David Freeze as well. It said one of the great moments of his career when he made his debut with the Cardinals. Freeze had already moved on, was already with the Angels, and uh, he he got a letter, a handwritten letter from David Freeze, congratulating him. He looks like Dante Brichette. <laughs> Does three to the count, and Voigt takes a cold strike three. Trevino keeps it going. His third strikeout. This one a backwards K. And Trevino seven in a row now since that walk to Andujar in the second inning. He's going to roll it, huh? Yeah. He's just rolling it. Well, sometimes you go with the matchups. Sometimes you go with the feel. And this pitcher, Trevino, is on a roll. This is where the crossroads comes. This is where the rubber meets the road between the analytics and what the numbers say and what the manager senses and sees. And a 98 mile an hour bullet in there for a strike on Gregorius. Did you see the movement on that thing? I think it's so ironic that he always puts the ball in a change up grip before he's going to deliver it to the plate. It's been no change ups tonight. How'd that ball have time to move? <laughs> And it's 0 2. Gregorius was the first batter 
that Trevino faced. Remember we told you at the outset because we were told and that's was the plan here that no Yankee hitter would face the same pitcher twice. Right. So it all goes out the window for Bob Melvin right here Ronnie based on what you said. This is a guy who sees what he sees and right now this is his best option and he's got Gregorius 0 2. His young right hander who appeared in 69 games this year. He's seen enough of them to know that he's not afraid of the moment tonight. Had a little neck injury that led to the difficult September. Has a swing and a miss. Luke Roy blocks and will throw to first in time to secure the strikeout. Lou Trevino, eight straight retired, producing nine outs, and it's two nothing Yankees. The MLB postseason on TBS is presented by Hankook Tire. Chase down your passion, never halfway. And by T-Mobile. Whether you're home or away, T-Mobile has you covered. Monument Park always a great spot to see at Yankee Stadium. And Jonathan Lucroy with a base hit to start this inning. On the first pitch, Jonathan Lucroy with a single. And Luis Severino back on the mound and Dennis it looked like he may have thought it was his last inning. Don't tell me he didn't <laughs> think he was done the way he came off the mound at the end of the fourth inning. Then he throws a slider to Lucroy and he gets a base hit first hit of the game. You know it's hard to get that pumped up. And after four innings and then come out for the fifth. Now he's going through the order for the third time. His ERA in the ah. fifth inning this year Severino's. Is 6.75 and he's given up seven oh. of his 16 home runs in this frame. Now that would almost exclusively cover the third time through the batting order for Severino. Nick Martini at the plate. He gets that third at bat against Severino. Chances has continued to throw. He was not throwing between innings, but he is now up again in the I Yankee bullpen. To me, it's a second guess. I would have hooked him. There's no. I wouldn't have had him pitch the fifth inning. Mm. Two run homer Aaron Judge in the first. Lou Trevino with three scoreless innings for the A's. And now Martini down the left field line going to slice foul. 
They're still behind that fastball, even here in the fifth. But they're taking better swings. Yeah. But once again, the third time around now. Mm -hmm. And starting to get into the real dangerous part of the order. Chapman next. Jed Lowry, 99 RBIs. Then Major League Baseball's top home run man, Chris Davis. Well, gives a reliever no traffic. That's the problem. Key hitter for Severino. The 0 2 is low. That was a hard change up yeah, at 92. Well. I mean, there's been action on the bases, but that base hit by Lucroy, the first hit of the game, Severino has walked four. Problem with the changeup or a slider is a big hole between first and second. Here's a one-two, and he pulls it between nice. first and second. Base hit. Lucroy will hold at second. Judge has the big arm, and now nine and one deliver with singles. The first two hits of the game for the Athletics, and the big boys are coming up. And Aaron Boone is coming out. He turned on that fastball, he did. didn't he? He, he did. had to be sitting on fastball <laughs> after that changeup. And he ripped that ball. I mean, that's 98 miles an hour. And you called it right in that hole. And Patantis is going to have traffic. Severino's out. Gets a nice hand. But he's got two that belong to him as Patantis comes in. <laughs> Trying to downplay that birthday, Casey. There's two, know, it's a fire hazard up here with <laughs> too many candles. Here. Get out of here. <laughs> Sorry, Eck. I know you love your birthday. All right, Della Batantis now, and he will come into this game, Ron. This is a guy that doesn't like to pitch with men well, on. He only had eight runners on all year, but he will inherit Severino's two base runners with nobody out. Listen, this big fella is as talented as, as they get on the mound coming out of the bullpen. At times, has a slider act that's Unhittable. Oh, yeah. But this is some pressure here on Batances against the big part of the order. Well, he's go throws that breaking ball half the time. It's that hook from hell, is what it is. Big spot for the Athletics. Matt Chapman at the plate. Nobody out. First pitch is in there for oh. a strike. Oh, got that call on the edge. You throw that first pitch strike with a breaking ball, I bet that goes a long ways. Now what? Chapman did a lot of damage on the road this year. Found that power stroke to go along with that potential gold glove defense. In the role of run producer here in the fifth, that is up and in right across the knuckles at 99. So Luis Severino goes four, gives up two hits at this point. Two runners still his responsibility. Four walks and seven K's left to as big a standing ovation as you can get after four innings. He really pitched great though. I mean off speed stuff threw a ton of pitches. Yeah, not to mention the error and the misplay on what should have been a double play. So 
faced two extra hitters along the way and was able to pitch around it. Here's the 1 1. Chapman in the air to right field. Judge backing up on it. And he's got it for the out. Luke Croy will not challenge the arm. And almost got himself thrown out at second base. Judge has a bazooka. And it is a great equalizer. Anything hit to center field and right field, the Yankees do not allow bases to be added. That's fairly deep right field. Yeah. You know, you think about it, Luke Roy can't run at all. But if you can run a little bit, you got to challenge it there. I think you do because yeah. they got to keep the double play in order. Yes. So the ball probably just goes to second base, but Luke Roy, a catcher, doesn't have that kind of speed. Lucroy with a leadoff single. Martini runs well. He's at first, and Jed Lowry. I don't think in this open lineup, in my opinion, there's any other hitter that you'd want in a big situation than Jed Lowry. He is their run producer. I think he's their smartest hitter. I think he understands the strike zone better than anyone else in this lineup. And this is his moment. Hit 324 this year with runners in scoring position. That's significantly up from his 267 batting average. He was at his best when men were on base. A career year for him. Well, I tell you, when, when Patances misses, I mean, scares you. He yeah. misses by a large margin. Jed Lowry. Chance to put the A's on the board and a mm. high pop up shallow center field. Aaron Hicks will make the call and the catch. Two big outs for Della Matanzas as Lowry skies to center. Two gone for Chris Davis. You called it, Ronnie. That was his moment. He got a fastball. I was going to say, is that ball too tall? Okay. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, middle. I mean, this is a pretty good pitch to hit. No, pretty he, good swing at it. He, he knows he missed a pitch. Not that easy. No. And that ball's hot. It's not <laughs> like 85. <laughs> two on, nobody out now. Two on, two outs. And Chris Davis at the plate. Well, from Severino in the second inning when he faced Chris Davis, their game plan so far has been the slider against Davis. 0 for 4 in his career against Patances. Severino anxiously watching his runners on base. In there. Ah! One and one to count. Davis, the first AL home run champ for the A's since Mark McGuire in 1996. McGuire hit 52 that year. Davis with 48 this year to lead all of baseball. The A's hit 136 on the road. One and one. Davis takes a ball upstairs at 99 miles an hour. Davis's power spot is away. Everything's away. Yeah. 16 homers down and away. 15 homers up and away. Steps in the bucket. Very unorthodox swing, but he produces big results. And a wave and a miss. Got him to bite on that slider. And now it's 2-2, and Batanzas a chance to get through it. Put the ranch on a breaking ball right here. <laughs> <laughs> the ranch and the farm. That was Sanchez who asked for time and was granted. Go through the signs again. Luke Roy's been out at second base for a while. If you're suspicious about sign stealing, 2 2 the count. Davis chases a strikeout to end it. Severino's two runners are stranded. The A's have left five runners on the last two innings. Still 2 0 Yankees.
Jaguar performance presented by Jaguar and the winner of this wild card game has a date with the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park on Friday in how, game one of the ALDS. How about that year? 108 wins since 1912. It's been a long time. I mean, it's an incredible season, but they've got to finish it off. There's a lot of pressure on the Boston Red Sox. I wonder who they're going to play. I played with a team that won 108. You know what it does? Yes. Puts a target on your back. Uh -huh. You got it. Miguel Andujar will lead off for the Yankees. New pitcher for the A's, Sean Kelly. He was one of the five pitchers the Athletics added when they felt like they could be a contender this year. Coming from the Washington Nationals, he's been excellent for the A's. There's a bouncer. Chapman over dives to his feet, throw to first. Not in time. Andujar beats it. It was a heck of a play, but Andujar too fast. And he's got his first postseason hit of his career. I think Simeon had a better shot at this ball, not to say anything about Chapman, because he went a long ways to get this ball. I don't know if Simeon, he would have had more of a chance to get something on it, but nice play to get to it by Chapman. He's been doing this all year long. Look how far he went to get to this. I know Chapman and Arenado come from the same high school. They're both the gold standard in their respective divisions. And Austin Romine of the Yankees, all from the yeah. same high school, El Toro High School in Orange County. So the Yankees put a man on. Matanzas gets through a mess in the fifth with two on, nobody out. Now New York with a man on to start this inning, and Gary Sanchez at the plate. What a job by Lou Trevino. Cannot say enough mm -hmm. yeah. about what he did to right the ship in this game for Oakland and to give them a chance. You know, what was the script that Luis Severino would get three more outs than Lou Trevino here tonight. <laughs> That's what it was. Severino ends up with four innings, four plus, gives up two hits. He was scuffling, man, before he got that double play ball. So Kelly has this fifth inning. The bullpenning continues for the Athletics. And now the Yankees are in there. Very talented bullpen as well. Up the middle, there's a man right there. Flip it to Simeon. Simeon still first, not in time. Just a slow roller. They had Lowry squeezed up the middle, but not enough on the baseball to turn two. Now, Toro High School. What a program in a six year window producing Austin Romine. Then Nolan Arenado, two years behind Romine, and then Matt Chapman, who was two years behind Nolan Arenado. Chapman was a sophomore backup shortstop to Nolan Arenado at El Toro. And both of them performing in the postseason right now, all three of those players, but those two in particular, and have a great chance to be gold glove winners in each league at third base. Sanchez with great hustle up the line. Remember, there was a play early in the year in Tampa. Where the Tampa Bay Rays were able to end the game because Sanchez did not run it out and they threw him out of first base because the runner at second was safe. This time he was out. And there's a high pop up foul and out of play. It's amazing how a play like that comes back and that's the first thing you go to. Well, I was thinking the same thing. It's, it's like, like he was limping though a little bit then. And then he went on the DL. Kind of an embarrassment for him. Well, right? it's a lesson learned, right? Yeah. You never do it again. Sean Kelly had a big year in San Diego got himself a multi year contract with the Washington Nationals looks like Torres might have cracked his back. But there was a game that he had the pitch against the New York Mets where he gave up a home run late in a lopsided game threw his glove on the field and Mike Rizzo the general manager traded him said you're either in or you're in the way. Wow tough. That was tough. Can't be throwing your glove. Even though you want him. Wait till I get to the dugout until I fire that thing. <laughs> He's got Torres 0 2. And in the air, left field, backing up is Martini, and he's there for the out. Second out for the Athletics. Sean Kelly has come on, giving up the infield hit. And two gone back to the top of the order now, and Andrew McCutcheon. Della Batances comes out, retires three in a row, 
right in the heart of the athletics order to get through the fifth inning. And it looks like he'll be coming back out for the sixth inning. Bullpen is quiet for the Yankees for now. Here is McCutcheon. Traded from the Giants to the Yankees. And he has overtaken the left field duties. Brett Gardner is on this postseason roster, a major factor still. And you might see Gardner if the Yankees get a couple of more innings into this game with a lead. You might see Gardner defensively. Not that McCutcheon is a poor defender by any stretch. Gardner is exceptional. Yeah, McCutcheon, since he's been with the Yankees, because he's hitting first, he's been getting on base a lot. Been walking a lot. Did end up hitting 20 home runs this year, five with the Yankees, 15 in San Francisco, which is not an easy place to go, Bridge. Just turned 32 years of age. Been an MVP, a gold glover, great years with the Pirates. And he has is very familiar with this wild card game. Unfortunately for the Pirates, they had their fair share of suffering in the wild card game. Sean Kelly 11 pitches into this first inning as we play in the fifth and the two on the McCutcheon is in there for a strike 2 2 now there's no mystery to Kelly what you're going to mostly get from Sean is fastballs and sliders away that is his M.O. when he faces hitters he doesn't really bring it like everybody yeah. else but he just dotted that last fastball at 91 it's good enough as long as you paint. He's pitched well for Oakland since he's been there. Lucroy wants a slider. And the 2 2. He got it. Put it in a good spot. McCutcheon doesn't bite. And now it's 3 2. And that means Sanchez will be on the move. 2 0 Yankees on an Aaron Judge first inning home run. Second batter Liam Hendricks faced. The initial out getter of the A's today in this bullpen game. There goes Sanchez McCutcheon shallow fly ball back on it is Simeon he's got it for the out and the side is retired the A's will have Olsen Piscotti Laureano coming up to nothing New York.
copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Looked like it might be a slugfest when we started. Aaron Judge, a two-run homer, but it's been a pitcher's delight ever since. And these high-powered bullpens of the Yankees and the A's on display. Danny Echeverria will take over at third base. And Duhar is out. And Duhar committing the error in the fourth inning. And so Aaron Boone tightens up his defense. He usually has two measures to tighten up as Olsen takes a strike. Why is McCutcheon still in, you think, Ron? And and Duhar is out because I think uh, um, when you have Brett Gardner, he still has some value on the bench as a pinch runner, pinch hitter, etc. I think Echeverria is strictly a defensive player, so you don't worry about getting him in the game. Gardner can still provide some value from the bench. Straight up change. Remember, the A's have just the one lefty in their bullpen, Ryan Booker, who is yet to pitch, might be wanting to clear him as well. One and two to Olsen. Fernando Rodney, another among the acquisitions to bolster that bullpen. A's did go make a trade for a starter in Mike Fires, but they concentrated on the pen. They tried to create a super bullpen, and they're putting them all on display here in this wild card game. David Robertson is now getting loose. For the Yankees. This Yankees bullpen stands second to no one. I think Robertson's baseball. the most versatile reliever yeah. that they have. Matt Olson in a 2 2 count. And he breaks his bat, a little roller out to Voigt. And the first time Olson has been retired, had two walks. Chance of Luke come raining down on the first baseman. And let's check in with Lauren Shahadi. What do you have, Lauren? Brian, I spoke with A's EVP of Baseball Operations, Billy Bean, who has a reputation for not being able to watch his team play because he's too nervous. Billy said Brian Cashman, Yankees GM, suggested they go have dinner in the city tonight together, grab a bite, not check the <laughs> score until some prearranged time like 1030. Billy told me, sometimes I leave the game, go for a ride on the subway. I can't take it. It's out of my hands at this point anyways. Yeah, uh, made famous in the month. Ball movie, of course, about his nervous habits. But he, I, it was, it was interesting. He sat down in our meeting today with yeah. Bob Melvin. He was pretty calm. He's got two old friends and you and Ron Darling to. He to seemed chat very with. chatty to me. He seemed <laughs> nervous to me. Yeah, um, chatty equals nervous. And yeah. I think, um, <laughs> I think also you feel pretty good about yourself when your team wins 97 ball yeah. and, yeah. and third lowest payroll right now, right? <laughs> By the way, General Manager David Force deserves a lot of credit as well. Oh, to the count. Piscotti able to lay off. Yeah, before the game, two old friends, Brian Cashman, Billy Bean. I remember when Billy just started as an exec. I was still playing. He would yeah. ride that bike the whole game. He used to catch me in the bullpen. Don't get over there. He was the last 25th <laughs> man. <laughs> Here's the one-two. Piscotti a wave and a miss. And Batantis is on his A game here tonight. His second strikeout, five in a row retired. Well, this wild card game is a troublesome memory for the Oakland Athletics. 2014, Salvador Perez with the big base hit to win the game in the 12th. The Royals, of course, would go on and participate in the World Series. And that was just a heartbreaking finish. Billy Bean said it was the worst moment of his professional career. That ball is foul, just foul. That game got away Lord from them is what happened. They had that game in hand. Well, they did. What what happened in that game was Kansas City did not stop playing their kind of baseball. They stole seven bases, even when they were down by four runs late. The A's only needed three, six more outs yeah. to win that ball game with John Lester yeah. on the hill, and it didn't happen. They had a four-run lead. That's when he went all in on John Lester and Zamarja that year. Loriano a swing and a miss. This guy is sick for Tansis. I mean, he's unhittable when he's got that nasty slider and fastball that's upper 90s. It's just not fair. The power we've seen in this game from both sides, but specifically Severino and Batantis. 
as hard as you can, as long as you can. Here's the 0-2. And a fastball at 99. Laureano has been impressive laying off that pitch. Remember the at-bat in the fourth inning. He walked, and Severino was out there four out of five pitches, and he did not bite. Back to that hook again. Here's a one-two. No, oh, and he's gone see. this time. 98 pinks. Laureano's out. Three Ks for Batanzas. Six in a row retired. Two nothing Yanks. The MLB postseason on TBS is presented by Hand Cooked Tire. Chase down your passion, never halfway. And by T Mobile. Whether you're home or away, T Mobile has you covered. Times Square all lit up, got the game on. A lot of eyeballs on that one here tonight. And just a few miles from there at the Bronx at Yankee Stadium Della Batanza six in a row retired he struck out his last two hitters he is fired up <laughs> that's what this game does <laughs> hey, to you. listen you have to remember he was persona non grata in that bullpen yeah. last yes. year because he had I don't know if he had the yips or whatever he had but he could not throw strikes and a huge outing here for the Yankees this evening 41 year old Fernando Rodney pitched in a wild card game last year then it was the National League wild card game a year ago pitching for the Arizona Diamondbacks and I hope he doesn't take exception but he's like old faithful man. He oh, just uh, he's been around the <laughs> world now in a hurry and, and he's been doing it a long long time. Uh, another no mystery guy fastball still throws hard but that parachute change up parachute change that, that, that's his pitch. And from the 41 year old Rodney to face one of the young stars in the game and Aaron Judge who hit a two run bomb out of here in the first inning that was following a McCutcheon walk and the Yankees had two on the board before there was an out recorded Aaron Judge in the bottom of the first inning did not miss this fastball from Hendricks well you see all the pitches that he got he got ahead in the count Kind of turned it up a notch because he knew the fastball was coming. Followed him. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. 
No balls and a strike. Rodney. And a little jam shot. That's oh, fair. Oh, just goodness. inside the line. Going to be extras. Judge on his way to second base. It is a double for Aaron Judge, and it starts the Yankee six. Ronnie, that is branch work <laughs> out of the glove, huh? He goes bridge the first time on a fastball in, and he's so late on this fastball. It started off foul, went fair, and that's an easy double for him. That was a beautiful thing. Almost hit it out of the catcher's glove. That's how late he was. Look at him. You got a <laughs> smile, man. That yeah. is living in it right there. See? <laughs> Check the exit velocity on the two balls he put in play here tonight. The home run left the bat 116. That was slightly above 16. A home run hitting team. They set the record this year in a situational hitting spot. Mm. Got to get him over. Aaron Hicks. This is big here. Got the shift on. Three infielders on the right side. Hicks, the three hole hitter. And a good block back there by Jonathan Lucroy. Ball had some backspin. It starts off it. foul. Look at this thing, and it comes back. Talk oh. about some spin. <laughs> well, the Oakland A's, that is their best card in their bullpen. Lake Trinan. Trinan getting loose here. Interesting Trinan before Familia. Yeah. Could be the game right here. There's a base hit. That's through. Judge will turn and head home. He'll score. The ball is fumbled in center field. And Aaron Hicks drives in Aaron Judge. And it's a 3 nothing Yankee lead. Well, he gets a pitch to hit. He doesn't miss it. Well, Rodney threw Hicks a changeup. He spit on it. First pitch and then a fastball right there. And he waffled that ball to center field. Luriano had a little trouble with it. I don't know if he would have got two out of it. Maybe so, but he's had such a great arm. But Judge scores. The emotion is starting to kick in. Judge is in the middle of everything tonight. Yeah. He has been the big hitter in the big moments. Aaron Judge, rookie of the year last year. Showed big power in the postseason a year ago. He's got a home run and a double here tonight. Rodney with the fire burning hot. Giancarlo Stanton at the plate. Nobody out. Runners in. Oh, Lucroy lost the handle and over the third goes Hicks. And so, it's getting worse. So this is it crazy. We came into this game discuss, discussing Gary Sanchez and his inability to keep the ball in front of him. And it's the veteran. Jonathan Lucroy, who can't squeeze this fastball in the dirt. It's just the fastball. I don't even think that ball is really in the dirt. He just took it for granted. He had it. Scott Emerson on the phone to the bullpen. You saw Trinan getting loose. Yeah, I think he just flashed the number one there, as if to say one more, one more hitter. It's Marcus Jensen down there. The bullpen there goes. No, I guess he said he's ready. So maybe he said one more pitch, and he's ready to enter this game. And Bob Melvin will take no chances. Fernando Rodney comes on, faces two batters. A little handle hit double for Judge, and then a bullet by Hicks. Runner at third, nobody out. And one of the game's best relievers and closers is going to enter this game in the sixth inning.
raucous crowd Yankee Stadium they are loud it's three nothing the Yankees have just added to their lead welcome inside the booth presented by Capital One all right X so Bob Melvin's playing a major card right here this is his closer he was hoping to get the last two innings out of him he's on in the six Blake trying to well they don't want to put the ball in play we're talking about no contact you got you know you got a guy on third base which is a huge run it's tough enough as it is already three to nothing but this is one of the best if not the best relievers in the game. And you're looking for three punch outs or pop up or whatever. That's right. He's got 100 strikeouts and 80 in the third innings pitch. Why not Familia here instead of trying it? Familia's control is the kind that the ball is usually put in play. He's a sinker ball pitcher. Can he get strikeouts? Yes, but not at the rate of trying it. Trying to hold serve and the Athletics do score. You got to figure Familia is going to be a big part of the finish line here for the A's. But right now, the game is on the line and Bob Melvin. Is going to send out his best. Look at the ERA 0.78. Eckersley like. Infield is in for the Athletics. Runner at third, nobody out. This guy has got one of the hardest sinkers there is in the game. Even when he was in Washington, all he had to do is figure out how to throw strikes. His stuff is that nasty. He has figured it out. On the West Coast. Don't forget, he picked up this at bat mid count. There was a, a ball already delivered by Rodney. So, Bob Melvin and trying to buy time to get Trident loose. Well, he can't be. It's 3 0. He can't be easy to catch, too. He just threw a slider right there, a little blade. Real late break. Every athletic pitcher coming into this Hornets nest. You got the third base to play through the wing pack. You cannot give in here three and oh make your pitch make a quality pitch Stan will be swinging three balls no strikes on Stan the runner at third infield in and that one's in there for a strike I was wrong there it looked like he was taken all the way Stan yeah he was power versus power Ryder. Yeah, he's going with a breaking ball. Three balls and a strike. Hicks the runner at third and a swing and a foul tip at 98. You know that too is a sinker. Yeah. As hard as you yeah, can you go. go. Imagine that. You know what's interesting about this infield defense? Only with Stanton. The infield's in, but he is so mm -hmm. dangerous. Chapman still wants to be as deep as he can in thir at third base. Oh yeah. I thought which maybe makes Chapman very, was just you? being defiant. Which yeah, which self makes preservation it very difficult <laughs> to throw Hicks out at the plate if there's a run on contact. Chapman, if he could throw high hair right here, he hasn't got one though. It's it's cutter, sink, three two the count. Here's a pitch and a bouncing ball foul. And he's only given up one home run to a right-handed hitter this year. Trying that was just Justin Upton. I mean the superlatives just go on and on with this guy that was by the way April 6th that home run. Yeah. He's given up one earned run since July 24th. It's just absolutely sick the way he's pitched. Interesting though low ball pitcher. Low ball hitter. Yes. And that's what he's throwing him right now. And that power sinker in the upper 90s three and two the count on John Carlos Stanton. And pulls one foul. He'd blow his mind with a four seamer about Bell Dive, <laughs> wouldn't he? He would. <laughs> no chance. Can't make up pitches now, though. <laughs> a huge spot of the game. The Yankees have added on. RBI double by Aaron Hicks. Bob Melvin Ooh. going with his best. Cutage. Gonna try to put a wrinkle on one. Three and two, and there Got is him. the wrinkle, oh. and no, uh, didn't get the call. Stanton draws a walk. Oh. I gotta have that. So to me, that's the same strikeout Severino got a Piscotti yes. earlier in the game. It's that slider that doesn't back up, but it stays on the inside corner. Wolf called it earlier in the game. He didn't call it oh, here. Oh man, I gotta have that. It wasn't his biter. I mean, he, but it's a. I, uh, it's legit enough. I gotta have that. Luke Roy gave I'm him a, you, a that's, great that's, look at it. Could have gone either enough. way, right in that gray area. If you're from the pitcher side, you want it. If you're from the hitter side, you say this guy's hard enough to hit without getting the edges. 
And what his is thought to be a pitcher's umpire, Jim Wolf, not on this occasion. And now the Yankees with the big power bat of Luke Voigt. Two on, nobody out. First three have reached. Two doubles and a walk. And taking off Stanton, no cover there with the infield in. That'll be a stolen base for Stanton. Well, that's just um, before these series start. You have these meetings with your advanced scouts, and they will tell you things like this. If the infield's in and it's first and third, the A's don't have a play to cover second base on, his, on an attempted steal. So we can take it every time. Stanton does. A lot of clubs give it up. Yep. A spot where the Athletics need a strikeout. Multiple signs with the runner at second base now. Didi Gregorius waits to hit next. Once again, not an easy guy to catch now. Little cat and mouse game here by uh, Trinan and Voigt. Voigt's trying to get his timing down. Trinan and Luke Roy have been having a hard time kind of getting their signals together, so Voigt steps out. Yeah, Luke Roy trying to maybe change the sign with the hand signals and then with the numbers mm -hmm. and there's that power sinker that misses two balls no strikes you, you can see Luke Roy there telling his pitcher come on calm down yeah. relax you've been in this situation a lot all year your stuff is good enough throw strikes it's almost like he just has to throw it down the middle and let it happen <laughs> it sounds silly but I know what you're saying it's going to move somewhere. Two and oh the count second and third and a bouncer foul. Luke Voigt. Well, imagine. Him starting the year with the Cardinals. Log jam at first base. Wondering. If there was a spot for him on a big league roster now he's. Performing at the highest level with the Yankees. Had a monster. Month. Hitting a home run every 10 at bats. Here's a 2 1. Tied him up. That was his cruising fastball at 96. Every big hitter wants the ball out over. They don't want to be jammed inside, and that's what Trinan does best. I would think right here with the kind of lineup the Yankees have, Hicks is not running on contact with the infield in. He's just holding at third base. He should just follow that thing up with the same pitch. Hicks with good speed at third base. Won't take much to get him in. Remember the arms in the outfield. Very good in right and center. And back did. inside. 3 2 the count. This is the game. That's it. So you can't give in. I know it's 3 2 and you no. need an out, but you still do not give in to Void. Make him chase something that's your pitch. The worst that happens if you got the bases loaded with no outs. Does that's the worst. To, does he go to the slider as he did? No, I think he would stand. See what he has. Three balls, two strikes. And a fastball just oh. fouled off by Void. He hung in there. That foul tip, once it's fouled, it hit Luke Roy in a strange place on the glove, caught his thumb. That's a luck play for a catcher. There's no skill in a foul tip strikeout. It's either in the pocket or it's not, and that one bit him. It's like jamming your yeah. thumb in a doorway. And now with a runner at third base, we need a long web. <laughs> that's what you need there. Yeah, that's still that bothered him. Luke Roy's not a guy that shows a lot of emotion and as far as pain goes, but that one got him. Infield in, second and third. Pound him in there again, I bet. Coming back with the 3 2. And Boyd hanging tough. I mean, this is one of the reasons you love analytically. When you go out and acquire players that you think are your players. And that's why the Yankees went after Luke Voigt. He stays on the ball. Try he got power to right field in a small ballpark. 
and taking a big at bat here. See the pitch sequence. Working him inside, down and away, and on the inner half. This is the eighth pitch of the at bat. And Trident deals a 3 2 and a bouncer foul. He's hanging tough. You'll see at least nine. Trident has not recorded an out. He entered the game in a 1 0 count, issued the walk, and now 15 pitches. He's still grinding with Luke Voigt. I mean, how do you even have a feel for a breaking ball right now, you know? Boy, it seems like the pitch to throw, though. I know. Huh? He's so good for so much. Just one that starts there and goes the other way. Boy, trying to add on here. Big spot. And another 3 2. And a high fly ball, right field. Piscotti back at the wall. And it is off the top of the wall. Ball's in play. Hicks is in. Here comes Stanton. Throw to the plate late. Stanton is in. It's a two run triple. A great at bat, and he gets a slider. I think might have been the ninth pitch, a little slider, not a bad slider. He thought he got it. I mean, to foul off so many pitches in in your kitchen, yes, and then be able to stay on that breaking ball. That ball just barely Ooh. stayed in here. Piscotti almost caught that ball. Then again, it might almost was a three run Johnson, yeah. but he caught it almost made a great play. Wow, the fans' hand right in front of the glove of Piscotti. I don't think there was contact. What a big moment for Luke Voigt. Four nothing, I'm checking, five nothing Yankees. And now that one's driven into left field. Voigt's going to tag. And the throw comes in. Voigt is safe. Six nothing. Is Voigt a star for the Yankees or what? I mean, he just gets in. It's a good throw by Martini. I didn't think he had a chance. Look at the slide. He gets in with the right hand. That throw beat him. We see most runners when they're sliding to home, they'll touch that oh. plate on the outside part, but yeah. it could be one they're definitely going to check. This, this could be a double play here. Did he get him on the shoulder? I think he might have. Let's watch the hand. Not there yet. Tag. Oh, wow. can't see from that angle. Wow. That, nothing there would allow you to think it would be overturned, but Luke Voigt, heck of a slide as the throw was coming up the line. Remember, if the throw comes in to the line, the catcher has the right to go catch the ball. So it's not, he's not blocking off the plate right there. As but that throw beat him. The, this replay review powered by Mitel. That's the crew chief Jerry Davis and the calling umpire Jim Wolf. Well, I, I, it, it's impossible. Yeah, it's, it's impossible to tell. Look at this, this angle. When's he hit him? When's he hit the plate? Is he hitting him or not? You know. The, I mean, that's the hard part. Okay. I want to feel slide. I want to feel when I see that that he's out at the play yeah. but I don't know if they have enough to change call on the field is just, safe yeah just not enough I think another angle for you yeah. I, you I, just, know, that, I don't see anything to that, overturn it does the glove bend on that one replay we saw to me it looked like he swiped across the shoulder and hit him in the back. Yeah. If he hit him in the shoulder there's a chance for him to be out. If he didn't touch him until he got to the numbers he's safe. Yeah, you could see the, the back of the, the neck of the shirt on the back move but that was long after he had passed the hand had passed home plate. I just yeah if he watching him. this all year I don't I don't think there's enough to overturn here but you never know we'll see this is in the hands of the replay officials who are Ed Hickox and Sam Holbrook and the Replay Review Center in Chelsea, New York, just down the road. It's almost like the strings of the catcher's glove almost yeah. didn't touch him, but you know what I'm saying? And that Wait, doesn't work. Did it nick him or not? And the call is safe. Yeah. So 
Certainly not enough there to overturn it. And it is a run scoring sacrifice fly for D.D. Gregorius and Bob Melvin's worst nightmare in this game has come true. It has been a four run Yankees inning. Six nothing New York. And just one out. All started with an Aaron Judge double down the right field line. And Amy Echeverria's first at bat. Well, they took their shot with Tryon. I mean, he had to pitch some tough at bats. Yeah, a number of sinkers, and then he got burnt on that slider. Could have called strike three on the one slider to Stanton. Right back to the mound. Trident fires one to first. There is out number two. Echeverria on the one three put out for the second out. A hey, reminder play ball is MLB's initiative to inspire all forms of baseball and softball participation, making play opportunities available and fun for everyone. To learn more, go to playball.org. You know, Eck, you and I talked about it before. The more pitchers you use, the more you put yourself in a spot that each and every one has to be perfect. Trevino, Kelly, and Trinan have been good, not great. Trevino was great. But Rodney not getting through that inning was huge. Yeah, Facing Russ. two batters, not retiring one. First two runs belong to Rodney. And the other two belong to Trident. Ground ball. Simeon will take care of Sanchez, but damage done. The New York Yankees with a four spot in the six. Six nothing. An ALDS doubleheader, Cleveland and Houston, 2 p.m. Eastern, Oakland or New York against the Boston Red Sox at 7.30 Eastern. Coverage starts at 1.30 with the MLB postseason pregame show on TBS presented by Chrysler Pacifica. David Robertson will take over for New York. It is 6-0 Yankees coming on the heels of a four-run sixth inning. Robertson, boy, he's been money for the Yankees for a couple of stints. 
went for the, to the White Sox for a while, but he's back. He is so versatile. Doesn't throw anything straight. Be interesting to see how Aaron Boone maneuvers his way through the final three innings. Nine defensive outs. This there is, is activity in the bullpen for the Yankees. Yeah, Zach Britton. This is the embarrassment of Rich's time for the Yankees as they trot out closer after closer. There's a line shot. Oh, oh what a catch by Danny Echevarria. Oh, prime in the ladder. In the game for his defense. And cashes one in for his manager. What a play. Wow. Simeon drops the head on a curveball and look at him get up. The timing is incredible at his peak. How good does that make your manager look? Oh, <laughs> doesn't it? Wow. Smoke that ball. He's been a great defensive player as a shortstop his entire career. Nice pickup by the Yankees. You know, they never dreamed that Gregorius would be going through his injuries, the wrist injury that came later. They just. I wouldn't say on a whim, but in passing, where do we need depth? We could use a, a shortstop, a plus shortstop. Who's available? Let's go make the deal for Danny Echeverria. And there's a really good chance, because of his ability to play all over, that he will end up on that postseason roster should they advance to the DS, not just the wild card roster. Well, that catch will get him on the roster. Oh, sure. <laughs> He's One play has made the move perfect. Yeah, yes. And Ronald Torres not on the wild card roster. Yankees got him from the Pirates. He was an outstanding shortstop with the Marlins. Had some time with the Rays. That was a big time play at third. Here's Jonathan Lucroy with one away. Well, if you're the Oakland Athletics right now, you got to know you're in Yankee Stadium. There is. The ability to put some runs on the board in this ballpark and as good as the Yankees bullpen is it is unlikely but it is possible and this is a ball club that has overcome and thrived in that underdog role all year might as well let it roll for the last three innings and see what you can come up with they yeah. need base runners. Yeah they've thrived scoring runs late in games too. Lucroy in the left center and then McCutcheon way over there on the defensive shift made an easy catch in the gap. Well, the scouting reports laid out perfectly there. McCutcheon starting well off the line. By the way, this near catch by Piscotti, near home run by Voigt. The fan reaches out. We just wanted to show this to you. There was no contact with the glove, Ronnie. Maybe if there is, the it, fact that he does lean out puts it in question. It did. It, it was kind of after the fact when he touched the glove, but if Piscotti got leather on that, certainly that would have been yeah. a bone of contention for the A's and Piscotti. I agree. That is Pat Hoberg, who is on his first postseason assignment as the right field umpire. He would have immediately pointed and called an interference. Instead, he was close to the play and palms down, and the ball was in play. By the way, Luke Voigt with a nine pitch, two RBI triple as the game breaking moment here. Well, last inning didn't start off that well for the A's. You talk about. Judge hitting that ball down line, the double that went foul and then a fair and then base hit by Hicks and then the triple was a backbreaker. How many times is Piscotti replaying that moment, knowing he could have caught? It would have been a phenomenal catch, and it still would have delivered a run. Yeah. It would have, but it was a great effort. And right here, they, they hit the ball hard twice. The bullet there to Hetzeveria, and then. McCutcheon went a long ways for that ball. It was hit hard by Lucroy. I mean, we talk about infield shifts all the time. Mm. We never talk about outfield shifts. He was playing in the gap. Twice tonight it has shown up for the Yankees in a big way. And you look at McCutcheon right now in left field as Martini with a swing and a miss. He is 75 feet from where he was during the Lucroy at bat. So, yes, you're technically playing left field, but you're playing. A vast amount of space. Now he's trying to protect the line with Martini up there. And the 2 2 pitch, a little half swing. He goes. It's a strikeout. It ends the inning. Two hard hit balls for outs. An opening line shot by Simon Echeverria hauls it in. And the Yankees are rolling right now. 6 0 in the wild card game in the AL.
Tonight's game summary presented by Geico. The Yankees with a four spot in the sixth inning with Blake Trident on the mound. Two of those runs belong to Rodney. Two to the fantastic closer of the A's. They took their shot. The Yankees come up big. Luke Voigt with a two RBI triple and a nine pitch at bat. It is six nothing as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. And uh, guys, I, I think coming into this game, the Yankees being the home team, winning 100 games. Probably had all the pressure on them, right? I mean, I don't think that's we uh, talked about. Line, but we talked about before the game going into the locker room and then to the A's locker room, and I don't know. I could just was it me or the, the pressure? I just thought the pressure was on the Yankees. Well, well the, the the A's locker room had the music playing. Uh, they were relaxed. Um, they've had an amazing season, yeah. maybe a year earlier than they thought they would. Um, but the Yankees have been chasing the smoke coming out of the exhaust of the Red Sox yeah, all true. year long and with 100 wins the pressure was on them at home to get it done wild card games the home team was five and eight yeah that's right and now they're primed after the Severino start they're primed to go into Boston and if they finish this game up pressure is going to be on Boston. oh the yeah. pressures <laughs> on Boston there's no doubt about it well for the Oakland A's just got to start chipping away whenever you yeah. get a chance. How about this play by Echeverria playing it just his fourth game at third base. Had not played third base since 2012 until this year. Take a look at that stat cast powered by Amazon Web Services. Left the bat 104. And brought him in to play D. One of the slick fielding shortstops in the National League for years with the Marlins and the Pirates. And hey, he's all smiles right now. Hey, those top of the food chain shortstops, they can play anywhere yeah. defensively. Oh, a lot of things going well for the Yankees, really. A couple of great at bats. So Blake trying to back on the mound after a 20 pitch inning. Did retire the last three batters. Gregorius had the sack fly. And an RBI by Aaron Hicks, who drove in Judge. Two RBI triple by Voigt on the ninth pitch of the at bat. It was a terrific at bat by the slugger. And then the sack fly from Gregorius. Six nothing. Labor Torres batting for the third time. He is 0 for 2. You know, you go back over last inning and the at bat to, to Voigt and all the hard sinkers. He pounded him in so many times. He did throw him a slider. It was a strike. I mean, it's hard for him to think I'm going to throw a biting slider in the dirt. There was a base open. I mean, he didn't have to give in, but still, it's just, and that's a Yankee Stadium triple, is it not? Yeah, I, I mean, for Luke Voigt yes. coming into this game, who had him in the triple? Nobody. <laughs> in the triple pool. <laughs> And he kind of watched it out of the box he too. You know, I mean, he thought it was gone, and then threw it into fifth gear, at least fourth gear for Voigt. <laughs> and the slide at the plate was pretty special <laughs> by Voigt too. I mean, for a big man, right? Yeah. Well, this year, at the end of July, the Oakland A's came back from an eight-run deficit versus Texas. Problem: the Yankees aren't Texas. Mm -hmm. There's a 2 1 and a swing at him is 2 2. By the way, that triple for Voigt, the first of his major league career. Hadn't been around long, broke into the big leagues just last year. 62 games with the Cardinals last year. Boy, he's magic. <laughs> he, <laughs> he is. is. He's magic for the Yankees. They found something here at Voigt. Got the hair perfect. Mm -hmm. everything's, oh, everything's working. Think about how far the game has changed, right? Yeah. Heck, if I remember right, you wouldn't go down to the bullpen until about the seventh inning, right? Oh, no. So Trinan is in the role that you used to fill in the sixth inning, trying to get an out. Oh yeah. That's how the game's changed. And now the seventh. That yeah, carries on here, trying to go two innings. Oh, a little soft liner right to the shortstop Simeon for the out. Labor Torres is retired. He's 0 for 3. Boyd's triple. If you're going to make it your first triple in the big leagues, might as well do it in the postseason. And yeah, I hit that. Wait, wait. Oh, I got to go now. He thought he had $25 for Grandma Joan wrapped up. Oh, you got that right. <laughs> Considering the kind of player he is, it should be 40 bucks for a triple. Uh, and, you know, just go to finish off the thought on the fan reaching out over, if there is contact, obviously that's going to be called right away 
rule book states clearly preventing a fielder from catching a fly ball. Ah. And obviously they don't deem that to be the case. With the six umpires you got now, the two down the lines, a lot better look at it yeah. from your right field umpire. Hover. McCutcheon over to third. Here's Chapman. And a low throw. Oh, and oh my oh, goodness. What a, what a play. play that was. Are Matt you? Olson. Backing I mean. away. How about this backing away? This ball goes down the line and it's been it, it would have been awful. Probably three bases. They said Olsen could pick it up. And an errant throw by Chapman you don't see very often but a one hopper backing away and he picks it. And then scrapes wow. his right foot oh, yeah. across the bat. It's as good as deal. it gets. It is. You work with a guy who used to make plays like that. I did, but from the uh, other side. Whew. Keith Hernandez. That was pretty. Chapman did commit 20 errors this year, but these corner infielders of the A's, these are anchor pieces, not just what we see on the field, but anchor pieces as far as young players go. And these two led the majors in the defensive run save statistic. Mm. And showing off their fine form here, and every infielder you talk to talks about Olsen, how many errors that he saves for them throughout the year. He asked Marcus Simeon, how'd you improve your defense so much? Well, I give Ron Washington a lot of credit, but I also <laughs> like my first baseman over yeah. there, right? Big target with great hands. Nice touch. So two outs, two and oh the count to Aaron Judge. Two hits tonight. An electrifying home run in the very first inning. Off the Oakland starter Liam Hendricks. He knew he was going to be out there for just a short time. He lasted one inning. And then Judge with that little flare grounder that actually bounced for the first time in foul territory. It had so much spin, it ends up in fair territory down the line for a leadoff double. And the Yankees would put the first four batters on in the sixth inning. All four scored. I mean, I know that Judge is magic, but to hit a foul and make it fair. I didn't know he could pull that rabbit out of his hat. Judge has risen in the big moments in the postseason already. He's had four home runs in his last six postseason games. He becomes this kind of threat, that Barry Bonds kind of threat, where he's going to start to draw a lot of walks. We'll look at our player history presented by Jim Bean. Drink smart. Wild card games. Two under his belt. Four hits already. Two homers. Four runs batted in. He scored five times. And the first player to homer in multiple wild card games. He would prefer not to be in wild card yeah, games. I was going to say you want to make a habit <laughs> out of that. It's like the stress involved with all this. And it does bear looking at the Yankees went 100 games and they were without Aaron Judge for a good chunk of the season a little over a quarter of the season that's a big bat to play without along with a number of other injuries Aaron Hicks had a big hit himself in that sixth inning a double you know split I split the gap I don't know if the camera will show it right but Matt Olson is a big man. Ooh. A very big man, but not compared to Judge. I mean, look at the difference. Olsen dwarfs me, and Judge does the same. The 6'5 Matt Olsen looking up to the 6'7 plus Aaron Judge. God, he looks like he's 6'10. <laughs> and stands on top of the base for good measure, too. The Yankees have Zach Britton loosening in the bullpen. David Robertson with a three up three down inning with a strikeout. So there is one of the big acquisitions. Mike Harkey the bullpen coach keeping a close eye on him. Trying to this will be his thirty fifth pitch. Hmm. You know before trying to ends this appearance I mean he he had such an incredible year. He really did. I mean, and everyone knows it out in California that this guy has 
was money for them all year long. I don't think he'll get it, but he's going to get a lot of Cy Young votes. Yeah. Don't yes, you think? Yeah. Yes, he will. As will Diaz up in Seattle, but I think Snell's going to get it. Me too. Outstanding lefty of the Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay, of course, in the news all year in baseball with the opener. But it was I'm a familiar scene for them as the A's tried to use the opener in the bullpen game here today in the wild card game. And the 1 1 is low. Oh, no, I beg your pardon, a strike. And it's 1 and 2 on Aaron Hicks. It's familiar gets up in the bullpen. See, it's easy for me to save Blake Snell. You can save Blake Snell. And where are you going tomorrow? Oh, that's right. Houston and Verland. Well, I'm not going to change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but he's right there. Yeah, he is. Dennis will join five times. Yeah. That could be joining Don Orsillo and Hazel May on the division series with the Indians and the Astros. Well, this American League is just loaded. Loaded. Three teams with 100 wins or more. Yankees with 100 wins in the wild card game. 97 wins for the A's. They're on the road in the wild card game. And what about that series? Houston and Cleveland starting pitching dynamite. You've got the right person there and you to talk about those pitchers. I love to talk about guys painting all day long, <laughs> right? First time in. American League history, or really baseball history, that there have been three 100 win teams in one league. Austin with 108 franchise record, Astros 103 wins, franchise record, Yankees with 100 wins. The Indians with their starters with the 200 strikeouts, four of them. It's never happened in this age of strikeouts. Strikeouts to walks, that, that, that starting rotation, almost four and a half. Wow. They're getting healthy though. Indians with Trevor Bauer coming back. They'll drop a starter in their bullpen. Hicks gets jammed. Only infielder over on that side is Chapman, and he makes a play to win the inning. Six nothing New York. Seven in the books in the wild card game.
The 2018 American League Wild Card is presented by Hancock Tire. In the big city tonight on a beautiful night for baseball. Game started with an Aaron Judge two run homer in the first. The Yankees add four more in the sixth. They've gotten great work from their pen. Brett Gardner is the final defensive piece for Aaron Boone. He takes over for McCutcheon in left field. So Gardner, Hicks, and Judge. The Yankees outfield and Zach Britton is on the mound for New York. Well, for um, Zach Britton, they just keep bringing in closers, Zach. <laughs> and everybody was <laughs> after him during the trade deadline. A lot of teams. He didn't pitch good right away, but he's pitched good in September for the Yankees. Telematansis with two key scoreless innings for New York. There's a shot by Matt Chapman. And a base hit. Chapman has hit the ball hard yeah. three times tonight. Only one hit to show for it. Yeah, two bullets to right field that settled into the glove of Judge. And this one he splits the shift. You don't get too many balls up from Britain, and he smoked it. Well, you got to like what you see from the A's. Not necessarily tonight, but this season has been such a ride for Oakland. Athletics fans to have a team that has flipped it this fast and really good pieces. You talk to their players, they, they love the culture of it. It's not necessarily something you hear in a Billy Bean run organization, right? Culture is kind of the opposite of what would be important to analytics, but it's not that they search for it, but they yeah. found it with a lot of these players, and they've got some real building blocks here. And Bob Melvin, who it is reported is Considering an extension, you would mm. imagine that would be the case if he wants to say he's, this is his eighth year in Oakland. It's a bouncer to Echeverria, gets the out at second, quick turn, out at first, double play. I don't think so. No, no. I think they're going to have to check this. I mean, by the naked eye, it seemed like he beat that pretty easily. Yeah, yeah so oh, that's yeah. I didn't think I was crazy when I first <laughs> saw it. Oh, you was going to say this is going to be hard to turn. That's what I was thinking. Not that Lowry flies, but I thought he was in. That was Ryan Christensen, the bench coach, who alerts Bob Melvin. Check it. Yeah. Toes on, on the bag. You and I are crazy, I mean, but we can get that. Right. Yes, I can get that. I got glasses, but I'm cool. <laughs> that is Greg Gibson over there is the first base umpire, and he joins Jerry Davis. This. Yep. Replay review powered by Mitel. Yeah, that shouldn't take long. I just think, you know, we were on the A's, as I'm sure it's going to be a safe call. There we go. They just uh, have had a magical season. They've um, scored 280 runs from the seventh inning on. That's second to the Red Sox. So there's still hope for the green and gold. I mean, you've been watching that all year. And you know you think about it since what June 16th is when they were the best mm -hmm. team on from then on in all baseball. Yeah, they were 11 games back of the wild card spot after the conclusion of play June 15th. And then the 62 win since to put them in this game. Chris Davis goes down the right field line looking up he is judge and that's gone. Here we go. And the major league leader in homers. Chris Davis with a two run poke. It is a 6 2 game now. Zach Britton shaking his head. Well, the call gets overturned. Davis responds with an opposite field line drive home run. Well, we see the, the A's fans have seen this all year. This ball doesn't get off the ground very high, but this is Yankee Stadium. And it's almost like to me a no doubter as soon as he, he he touched it off. Well we showed his chart before home runs from coast to coast from Chris Davis. We're already talking about seventh inning on now they mm -hmm. scored so many runs I mean here you go. Well Davis has been a big part of that 19 of his home runs of his 48 this year. From the seventh inning on in the regular season so add one to that with this wild card game 20 of his 49. Now Matt Olson get a man on. In this ballpark, one swing of the bat, you're in business. Ground ball with a shift on, and is Torres for the out. That's the second out. No money in the, in the game of baseball on anything in the ground into the shift. 
That'll be the death of left-handed hitters. <laughs> it's Chad Green up. So no Chapman yet. He'll be held in reserve with the four run lead. Aaron Boone we asked him about multiple innings for Chapman. We've seen that before certainly his most famous multi inning outing in the World Series but Aaron Boone was pretty quick to shake his head on that one. He goes not right now. I'm not comfortable with that yet. We'll see how the game goes but he's a one inning guy for now. He's been battling knee problems all year has a role as Chapman but he's got some multi inning relievers. I don't think Chapman is one of them at this point. Booney's still grinding. He knows. He's seen a lot of games in this ballpark. And the A's hit a bunch of home runs, especially on the road. And they are a bloop and a blast from getting themselves right back into this one. In Britain, he can throw some balls now. You know you have the manager's attention if he goes to the chart. Two balls, no strikes on Steven Piscotti with two outs, and it's outside. It's ball Tell three. Him. Lost him on four pitches. Yeah, that's not good. Piscotti draws the walk. Hey, a quick reminder here the best way to stay up to the second this October follow at MLB on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Well, I don't think Green's ready yet, but I would guess that this is Britain's last hitter. He doesn't retire. Him. Hello. And now what becomes a huge at bat for the Athletics? With the rookie at the plate, Ramon Laureano. And that is right to Torres. Britain and the Yankees get out of it. So Britain bends a little. Two run home run by Chris Davis. Maintains the lead. It is 6 2 Yankees. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Pitch hit and run is the Major League Baseball's free skills competition for boys and girls age 7 through 14. Sign up now to host a free competition in your local community at pitchhitrun.com. 
John Carlos Stanton will bat for the Yankees in the bottom of the eighth inning. It is six to two. A two run homer by Chris Davis <laughs> has given the A's a little life, has taken that zero off the board. And because of that, Bob Melvin has Blake Trinan back on the mound for his third inning. He's given up one hit, two walks. Actually, just the one walk. The yeah. first walk he gave up, he entered mid count, which belonged to Rodney. And the bullpen is active. It's booked to the left hander, Iris Familia. I mean, trying to be in pushed the place where he's only been once before. He yeah. pitched three innings early in April. Most pitches he's thrown is 44. This will be number 41. And a swing and a miss by Stanton. I can't help but go back to that slider, that 3 2 slider. I got I got to have that. Yeah. Credit Voigt, though, he didn't miss it. Yeah. But I meant the 3 2 slider that he took, Stanton oh, never. Yes. Could have been strike that's, three. That's Could have, right. would have, should have. He had to draw the walk. In that sixth inning, he was aboard on that triple. Now oh. Stanton, way back. How far is this one going to fly? It is a fair ball, home run, tape measure shot, and it's 7 to 2 Yankees. Yeah, about that slider, right? <laughs> Don't leave it up. The slider just a hanging slider, and you know what Stanton could do to that. I feel sorry for trying. He's out for his third inning, and he gives up this blast. Even a role as Chapman <laughs> admired that one. A mammoth shot by John Carlos Stanton, and that's the end of the line for Blake Trinan. And if the A's don't come back. It's the end of a brilliant season that finishes in a way he would not want. Stanton goes deep. Seven to two Yankees. Tiger versus Phil. It's coming your way. It's Friday after Thanksgiving weekend, November 23rd. You can watch Capital One's The Match on BR Live. Let's get a StatCast measurement on this. StatCast AI powered by Amazon Web Services. John Carlos Stanton, hardest hit ball tonight. 117 plus. Travels 443. Just hooked inside the foul pole. And his first postseason home run in his first postseason game. And it's 7 to 2, New York, as Jerry's Familia coming from the Mets to the A's on the mound now. We asked uh, Bob Melvin about Familia. He said he fit in from day one. It was almost like he had been with us all year. Came into his office and said, hey, listen, I will pitch anytime, any place, for as long as you need me. That's what every manager would like to do. Oh, yeah. You're talking about 
A very talented guy that saved a lot of games with the Mets. Blake Trinan. And let me correct a mistake. I said the walk belonged to Rodney. It yeah. did not. So he has two walks, gives up three runs all earned in two innings, allows two hits, and a very disappointing postseason debut for Blake Trinan after a magical year. Luke Voigt at the plate. There's Trinan. It all goes so well for you all year, but he enters the game in the sixth inning. This is a second guesser's dream here today yeah. with the A's. Going with their bullpen. There was reason behind it too. They don't feel like they have the, the right kind of starter to pitch in a game like this. And so they decided the best way and their formula to a victory was going to have to go through the bullpen. And then it got sped up very quickly. Well, the strength of their bullpen, the uh, strength of their team is, of course, the hitting. But the other strength is the foundation, really, is their relief pitching. And if you worked backwards, they wanted Trinan to pitch eight and nine. They wanted Familia to pitch six and seven. Maybe Rodney in the fifth. But all of that was tossed upside down because Rodney got in so much trouble in the sixth inning. And Trinan, I think Bob Melvin identified the save's not going to come in the ninth. Right. It's a two-nothing lead. The save's going to come right now. Well, I agree, but he, yeah. there, he had no business being there for the to nap. start the eighth. I inning. agree. I agree with you. Luke Voigt in a 1 2 count on Familia. And down he goes on strikes. A swing and a miss. The A's with Mike Fires, whom they acquired from Detroit. Trevor Cahill, Brett Anderson, Edwin Jackson. Edwin Jackson's the only guy that made this wild card game roster. He's in the bullpen. And it is, you know, they could have started Fires. Right, I think could have or Jackson or whatever. But the analytics might take you out of that. Fires is a fly ball pitcher right. in Yankee Stadium. In Yankee Stadium. Right. You might not want to do that. I yeah. get it. You know, there's just. Um, but I can't get over having to run six or seven guys out there in this environment, Ronnie. You yeah. know, it's a crapshoot. I mean, your first thought is it's only an inning. You only have to get oh, three yeah. out. It seems so simple, doesn't it? I mean, it's an easy thing to do. Except there's 55,000 New Yorkers screaming at you. <laughs> well, the A's with using the bullpen game, the openers or the bullpen or the outgetters, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> they were four and five in September. And that's the time to do it because you have expanded rosters in the month of September. You have coverage. And if they come back and they do advance into the division series, Odds are against them right now, but if they do, you you can't really function that way in a division series. I mean, you might be able to get one game. Yeah. You probably have to do it right before a day off in the middle of a series, but you'll you'll have to call on your starters at some point. So they felt like that was the best chance to win here, just bringing high velocity throughout the game. As Gregorius bounces to second, and there is out number two. You know, you could go back to the 2011 yeah. playoffs where St. Louis beat what Milwaukee, and yeah. they didn't have a starting pitcher go five innings. Remember, that was unusual. The whole postseason, the yeah. whole postseason. So that you can almost call that kind of a bullpen game. Listen, bullpen games happen all the time. Well, at least you got when four you're innings from somebody. When yeah. your start if starter takes gas and can't go through oh. one or two innings, that's a bullpen game. Yeah. Well, Luis Severino, the Yankee starter, went four plus tonight. Two hits, no runs. He struck out seven. I thought he was done after four. Yeah. I really did. You could second guess that. Yeah. You know, he came out, gave up a couple hits, hadn't given up a hit. I mean, how do you take him out? But, you know, you don't want Patances to come in with two guys on. Meanwhile, Patances was awesome. Patances, two scoreless with three punch outs. Six up, six down. Across the fifth and the sixth inning. And that's where it all changed. Oh yeah. Matanzas went through the side in the sixth. Yankees come to bat in the bottom of the sixth. Judge had that little handle shot double down the line. Hicks drove one into the gap, and then Luke Voigt after a stand and walk at the moment. Triple off the fence and right. Drove in two runs. It was a broken bat and right to Simeon to retire the side. Last call for the swing and ace. 
Seven to two, courtesy of a Giancarlo Stanton bomb. And the Bronx Bombers living up to their nickname today with Judge and Stanton going deep. The 2018 American League Wild Card is presented by Hankook Tire. To the ninth we go at Yankee Stadium, New York, and Aroldis Chapman on the mound to try to close this one out in a 7-2 Yankee lead. Marcus Simeon will lead off for the Athletics, eighth place hitter, and the first pitch from Chapman gets away. And Eck, this is a pitcher who has been an all-star this year but has dealt with knee tendonitis as well. He's not clicking on all cylinders at this point either. They finally shut him down. You see the 55 games there. Obviously the dominance what new 93 punch outs in 51 innings. But you know he can lose it a little bit. He's always had control problems when you throw the ball that hard. I mean he averages what over 98 miles an hour. See Neil Walker in the game at first base and for Luke Voigt. Aroldis Chapman in non save situations, a 4 0 8 ERA. It's been a familiar ring yes. for closers throughout the years. It takes a long time to unravel that big body, doesn't it? Yeah, well, you know, uh, that's one of the reasons he's always been able to throw so hard because he's able to push off on that back leg and, and provide so much power. But left knee tendonitis will make it a little bulky I guess so. to try to get yeah. through the baseball. And a shot to center field. Simeon turns one around. And a clean single to center field to start the ninth inning. Marcus Simeon on twice. He started half stepping with that fastball over the middle of the plate. They're going to whack it around. Simeon deserved better after getting robbed in his last that bat by Echeverria. Yes. He unravels that big body. Fastball coming right back at you. Yankees trade him to the Cubs for that 2016 run. 
resulting in a World Series re-sign with New York signing a five year deal. It's actually his strikeouts per nine up over 16 this year. That's the best it has been since he was at 17.7 in the 2014 season. That's when he was pitching for the Cincinnati Reds in the middle of that great run. Jonathan Lucroy and an 0 1 count. Try to slide it there. Not only did they trade him to the Cubs, but they got one of their core pieces, Glaber yeah. Torres, who's playing at second base after they resigned him. That was beautiful <laughs> on their part. And I would say it was beautiful on the Cubs' part as well. They yes, got that, got that the coveted World Series title. It all, it all worked out as Lucroy <laughs> takes a strike. That one had triple digits on it. You know, it's just like not even a big deal when he throws 100 miles an hour. When he loses his strike zone, you'll see him flip more breaking balls yeah. over. He gave up a three-run bomb to Mookie Betts at the end of the season here in Yankee Stadium on a slider, mm -hmm. which you won't see very often. Yeah, Luke Croy's lone hit against Chapman in 10 at bats was a home run on a slider. Chris Davis a two run home run to put the athletics on the board in the eighth inning. These are down to their last three outs. Their ninth place hitter Luke Roy trying to keep it going. If nothing else Oakland's trying to force another move by Aaron Boone. Pretty good swing at it. Lucroy's mad at himself. He knows he missed the pitch to hit. Kind of a hanging slider on the outside part. Now their days matching up against one another in the National League Central. Lucroy with the Brewers. Chapman with the Reds. He's by far the guy who's seen Chapman the most. Lucroy's hit the ball hard twice tonight. Has a single and a line drive that was caught in the seventh inning. Well positioned Yankees in the outfield. They've got Gardner in that gap for this at bat here in the ninth. Here's a one two and a wave and a miss. Nope, foul tip, but it's into the middle of the catcher and a strikeout. Is that a changeup? You never see that. Once in a blue moon. And he gets a punch out with it. How about that? I know it's a slider. slider. That's a slider. Okay. I was going to say, what in <laughs> the world is that? You remember there was talk with the Reds you know when he was first signed by Cincinnati that was a long I think it was a six year deal coming out of Cuba he signed a major league contract but there was talk that he would be a starter and was a starter in the minor leagues but his value just became so great as a reliever. Marcana will pinch hit for Martini. First at bat. And getting a chance in a postseason. Canna with 13 home runs. Only Joey Gallo of the Rangers hit more homers against lefties in the American League. Stanton's on that list, which is unusual for a left hand hitter, Gallo. No balls and a strike. He's down to their last two outs. And it's 0 and 2. Oh, Chapman's moving pretty good for a guy with a bulky left knee. You know, I think sometimes we, we tend to forget as he gets a little older in his career. He's a pretty amazing athlete, Chen yeah, Chapman. Yeah. This is his age 30 season. And he's still bringing the heat. Yankees bullpen. Minus Robertson giving up. Or Britain, I beg your pardon, giving up the two run homer. Then on lockdown. Canna fouls it away. Hank's tough. No balls, two strikes. Well, a lot of talk about Severino versus Jay Happ for this wild card game. They decided on Severino, went with the velocity pitcher. And with two more outs, Aaron Boone and Larry Rothschild will have Jay Happ for two potential games in the Boston series if it should go five. Figure he will get the ball 
to start game one. We want Boston chance raining down here at Yankee Stadium. Two outs. And the Yankees are an out away from winning the AL wild card game in back to back seasons. We want Boston. That's only been going on forever. Triple digits. Yeah. Off the plate. Just no chance. <laughs> Well, they played Boston. They they went nine and ten against the Red Sox this year. A lot of lopsided games in those in those affairs. Matt Chapman, last hope for the Athletics. On the move oh. is Simeon, and he goes out to the mound to stay in shape, just to get in one more time. No, what uh, sign they're going to go with now that the runner has gone oh, okay, to good. second base. I was going to say don't you do it again. <laughs> just to stay in shape. Two outs. I mean, come on. I had a stat given to me by a friend last 57 games played by the Red Sox and the Yankees. Boston's ahead 29 to 28. Wow. Be a, be a first meeting in the division series. They've had so many battles throughout the years. It'd be interesting to see how Chris Sale is. Game one. Now you figure Sale and Price. That has not been announced officially, but that would be a good guess. Here's the 0-1 to Chapman, and it's outside. One ball, one strike. Got to be encouraged for the Yankees seeing these triple digits. Yes. Uh, from Chapman. Velocity has been down. And when it's down for a roll as Chapman, he's in the cruising range of 97, 98, but not the 100, 103 range. The 1 1. That's in there. One ball, two strikes. I, I didn't know that his ERA was like six and a half almost since the All Star break. I had no idea. So him looking good like that makes them feel much better. Yankees a strike away. Surviving this grinder of a wild card game. And a shot and picked up by Walker. Defensive replacement flips to Chapman. Ball game is over. The New York Yankees are moving on to the American League Division Series. Judge and Stanton go deep. Luke Voigt with the memorable moment the two RBI triple and a 7 2 final as the Yankees take down the Oakland A's in the wild card game of 2018. Well, it's, it's a shame that the, the, the A's couldn't get off to the start they wanted to with their bullpen game. Hendricks gives up the early two run home run to judge. They held that lead really stayed in the game because Trevino was so good for three innings but just too much for the Yankees tonight. But what an incredible year by the A's. You yeah. cannot overlook what they did from June on. They were awesome offensively. Everything went so well and all of a sudden tonight they ran into this and you got to give the Yankees credit because the pressure was on the Yankees. I mean it just was and big two run home run in the first inning by Judge really took a little of pressure off there by Severino. We're watching a good play by Walker to end this game. Well it sets up for the great rivalry in Major League Baseball in a division series round. 2004 Boston winning in seven down 3 0 in that series matching up in the postseason that memorable 0 4 league championship series the year before that Yankees won in seven. The 1999 Yankees winning in five in the LCS as well against Boston. And now they're going to go head to head in the division series starting Friday. Let's send it down to Lauren Shahadi. Lauren. Aaron, big home run to set the tone. How much fun is it for a power hitter to call this place home? Oh, it's a lot of fun. But, you know, first off, you know, congratulations to the Oakland Athletics on, you know, quite a, you know, what a wonderful season they've had, you know, get to this point. Um, but yeah, we, we love playing at home. You know, you felt the energy, you know, from the national anthem on, and it's, it's, it's another level here, you know, so it's on to Boston. We knew what Severino did in the wild card game a year ago. What does it say about your ace to have the performance he did tonight? 
Yeah, we saw him bounce back even in the playoffs last year after his start in the wild card game. So, you know, when I knew he was going to be named the starter, you know, I, was, I knew it was going to be nothing but great. You know, he came out there and, and dominated and gave us strong four innings, and that's all you can ask for out of your race. Up next, a date with the Boston Red Sox. How does that sound, Aaron? It sounds great. You know, they got a fantastic team over there, you know, but um, we're going to regroup, you know, get our way to Boston and, you know, get ready for a great series. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you. BA. All right, Lauren. Thanks. Primetime player. He is class act as well. First comment. Congratulates the Oakland Athletics. 11 hits for Aaron Judge in his two postseasons. Five home runs, including a big one in the first inning tonight. We'll take a break. Put the finishing touches on this one. The New York Yankees headed to Boston for an ALDS matchup Friday.